Praise God, it's offering time. Yes, let's clap for that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. As you prepare your offerings, as the Lord has leading you on what to give, uh, I'm going to read some scriptures to you. We still have the first fruit basket up here, the tithe basket and the maintenance basket. And if all that heavy chain in your pocket or pockets is weighing your purse down, there's a basket up here for that. Amen. So uh, as I give in today's offering, I stand in unity with God, his word, and the Holy Spirit. I stand together in prayer and agreement with those in my house, believing God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or imagine. I stand with my shield and my sword to war against doubt and unbelief. I stand against all the power of the enemy. I stand in my place and will not be moved. Wow. I will not give up. Wow. Thank yes. You. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So as you prepare your offerings, you can bring them up and all of those on Giveify. If you have a card and you like to use your card, you can get on Giveify, glorypointministry.org, and you can give on uh, Glorify. Um, Giveify. You can give on Giveify. Oh, glorify. glorify. Yeah. <laughs> I have changed it to Glorify. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you can bring your uh, offerings up anytime. Second Chronicles 2017, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position Whoa. yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. So, you know, every battle you don't have to fight in, the Lord said, he'll take care of it for you. He'll take care of it. Yes. Wow. Ephesians 6 and 11 to 13 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of Thank the you. devil. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And those, uh, don't forget, weigh your offerings, weigh your phone. Name your seed. Name that seed for what you're looking for and expecting God to return back to you a thousand fold. Look, a thousand fold. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all that you do unto us. We thank you, Lord, for your blood covering us through the night and waking us up to see another day. We thank you for favor, grace, and mercy that proceeds, follows, and surrounds us each and every day. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah, for your strength. You are an awesome God. You are a wonderful counselor. Lily of the valley, the bright morning star. You the keeper of our souls, our body, and our minds. We thank you, Father, for all you do unto us, Lord, that we're not worthy of. We thank you. We give you all the praise, the glory, and honor. We magnify your name. We ask that you touch each and every person, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bless them, Lord, on their jobs. Let them have favor, Lord, in Jesus' name. Go before them and order their steps. Give them strength, Lord, in Jesus' name. Renew their strength. Renew their bodies, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for healing for them in Jesus' name. For you are such an awesome God. And we can do nothing without you. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we bless your holy name. Bless your people, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I just, right now, in the name of Jesus, those of you who have been consistently tithing and giving your first fruits of substance, first fruit of time, and all that you have to God, 
Right now, I just invo invoke the first fruit, firstborn anointing mm -hmm. upon this church. Lord yeah. God, I pray for that special anointing right yes. now to re to rebuke the devourer for yes. their sake. Yes. Lord God, thank you for angels on assignment yes. to rebuke the devourer that's been coming against them. Mm -hmm. And I ask you, Lord God, right now to bring the exponential increase in harvest yes and that Lord. that the enemy has tried to squelch i thank you lord god mm -hmm. that even by april this spring there'll be new things sprouting oh, up from right, seeds right, you planted right, right, that right. you have forgotten about and the yes. lord says i have not forgotten about your harvest yes. it was very deep but the lord says i've been watering it i've been speaking over yes. it and the lord says it will come to pass and you and you wonder where that came from lord remind them the seeds are yes. planted yes. that yes. seem like they've been dormant but they have been there and you've been tending to them. I thank you. Well, you are the master of the faithful vineyard. Yes. I thank you that you are a good shepherd over yes. these sheep. I thank you, Lord God, for the blessings that you're bringing to your people. Thank in you. Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Glory, Glory to God. To God. Wow. <coughs> thank you, Lord. We thank receive you, that, Lord. Father. Thank you, Lord. See every declaration, every decree. Oh, I guess I'm next. Huh? <laughs> okay. I'll get, I'll get, I'm not going to back up on there then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness praise god well, i'm so glad you're all here today um you may not have seen me here friday night but i was with y'all i was watching online so i was hearing all the fun that was going on i felt bad i couldn't be here but i thought i better keep resting up and for this weekend, you know, we had our annual board meeting for Glory Point. It's a not-for-profit corporation, so we need to do our annual meeting. So we've had a big weekend. Apostle Leon's on our board, so we always do that in conjunction with this visit. Um, <clears throat> so I was here, and just so you all know, those of you that were here Friday night, I heard, Angela, I heard that word over you. I was texting some of you, but I'm telling you, I heard all the words, and it was just awesome. Okay. I'm really excited about Apostle Leon's message that he started on the glory, the waves of glory. So buckle up. Let's get ready for part two. And I was already praying that you will receive these words deep into your heart, that God will write them on your heart, that they'll come back to your remembrance. God has something here for you to do, so I want you to listen. Now, he may say something that you're like, I don't even know what that means, okay? The context of something. If you have a tablet and pen, write notes, write what God, I'm not saying write every word he's saying. Right. If you have a recorder, record the message, okay, when he starts, I'm going to get ready to introduce him. But then what I like to do is have a tablet and write down what I'm hearing God saying to me. If there's That's something good. that he says, okay, and you just feel a witness in your spirit, that is for me. If he's prophesying to somebody else, but you feel, oh my gosh, God's speaking to me. Write it down, and, that's Rayma, yeah. and then go take it to conversation with the Papa later on. Mm -hmm. Ask Holy Spirit to add on to that, to show you what that means and what you're to do with that. Good. Okay? Good. There may be a few things that may not relate to you, but I tell you, there's going to be at least, I think, 6 to 10 to 12 nuggets. That's what I always think. Write down your gold nuggets. Mm -hmm. Capture it. When you write it down, you're saying, God, it's important to me. There was one time Pastor David was preaching. And, and the Lord was speaking in my ear. And I wrote down, I only wrote down a couple things, but there were things that God wanted me to then talk to him about later so I could act on them. Okay? So it is an honor to have Apostle Leon here with us this weekend. You know, there are many bigger churches. There are churches in other lands that he could be going to, and he reserves a weekend for us every year. So I just want you to know how special... We are, well, at least I think we're special. If we weren't, I don't think we'd be on his calendar because he loves us. He's our spiritual father and covering. And he has been ever since the Lord took Apostle Vicky on to be with the Lord, which was 15 years ago. Wow. And wow. so we've been wow. carrying on. He's been right here for us <clears throat> to mentor us and to undergird us. And so it is truly an honor. And I'm glad that all of you showed up to be here to support him and to receive Amen. Amen. I really believe God's doing something glorious across the United States and in other countries. And but he has time for us. 
So I want you to wow. covet this time with him. Listen, right now I just break off any spirit of slumber, any spirit of distraction, every spirit of warfare trying to distract you today. I bind it in Thank Jesus' you. name. Yes. And I say, Lord, you get out and go back to the dry places. We have an open heaven right now. Mm. The Lord's presence is here. Right. So just saturate in it. I believe there's going to be signs, Amen. wonders, and miracles. Let the Lord touch you. If there's something deep you need a heart healing for, an infirmity, I'm here to receive myself today. So, and I, I just feel, do you feel the spirit of just love in this room? It's wow, a promise yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so Amen. just receive that. You know, we'll sometimes we get a little beat up during the week. Right now, I just want you to soak up his love, his mercy, and his grace. And we're going to hear the wisdom and hear the ministry of of the Papa from our spiritual Papa here, <laughs> Apostle Leon. So <clears throat> when he's prophesying for somebody else, you might just be praying in the spirit. But if there's something that you that that you're hearing that you feel the Lord saying for you, you just go ahead and receive it by faith. Amen. It, yeah. so I could say I could go on another growing, but let's have you come up and we'll get moving here. So can we welcome Apostle Leon? Yeah. 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 I'm so glad you're here. And we can just pray that that keeps going, even though it wasn't. My <laughs> no, outlet didn't work to charge it. We're excited to be announced today in the presence <laughs> of God's people. Look at somebody mm-hmm. saying, You're great. You're great. You're awesome. We hear enough negative things in our life. It's good to hear things positive. Amen. You know, that God is speaking to us. And yeah, you might be just be sensitive. We want to minister. I want to minister the word to you this morning. At the same time, I want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit limelight somebody for me to call you out. If you have your telephones ready so we don't have to wait for you to find record, all right, to redeem time. Everybody say redeem time. time. (laughs) Amen. So uh, we give you permission to go to your telephone. Amen. Find whatever it is you need to find tools or whatever it is on your phone and then find record. Amen. So that if we call you out, all you have to do is bam, hit the button, and we're right there together. Amen. And we're going to uh, break in with a word. Uh, I'm going to just recap just a little bit from Friday night. Amen. Just as a foundational. Amen. And just continuing on uh, with the word of the Lord and some things that we're really sensing this year. And uh, you know, I, I seek I seek the Lord every year. You know, just to get a foundational God word. What are we springboarding into in 2024? You know, or 5784. You know, what are we springboarding into? And uh, I don't know, try to avoid hearing what others are saying, but I try not to overhear what everybody's saying until I get alone with the Lord so Amen. that I can hear. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I hear what they're saying, then, uh, you know, you begin to see the bigger picture. Amen. But it's important for all of us to seek the Lord and hear what God is saying in your own spirit. Amen. And uh, but at the same time, uh, I, my leader is uh, Bishop Bill Hammond. He's my spiritual father, my uh, also my brother-in-law. Amen. So we've known each other 62 years. So, amen. So, uh, you know, I seek to hear what is God telling him as a, as a father, as a leader. You know, and then and then I, I seek to hear what is the you know what what is the other leadership that is has um, uh, seniority over me, and that would be his. His uh, son, uh, um, Pastor Apostle Tom Hammond and Jane Hammond. Amen. So I want to hear what they're saying. Amen. But it's so important that you personally hear what God is saying. Amen. And that um, I've discovered that in hearing the word of the Lord. Amen. That we're not the only we're not the only ones hearing. You know, we've got multi millions. Of saints of God and leaders that are hearing throughout the nations of the world, Amen. And uh, but we have to be faithful with what we're hearing, Amen. So if everybody is working together with the Word of the Lord that they're hearing in that year and stay in that vein, Amen. I believe that we all supernaturally break through to a new level. First Corinthians twelve four through seven says there are diversities of gifts and differences of administration. We know in part, we prophesy in part. Amen. And so it's important that we are faithful with the part that God gives us. Amen. And then what I hear from everybody else then begins to build the bigger picture of what God is saying to the one universal many-membered corporate body of Christ 
throughout the earth. Amen? And so, amen. Look at somebody say, my voice is important. My voice is important. Amen. And what God is speaking to you is important, you know? And I, I try to encourage the saints of God. Get alone with God. Amen? And hear the voice of God. Now, I've been recommending uh, Prophet Apostle Robert Gay, uh, who is the apostle and founder of, of um, the church in Panama City Beach, which is trying to remember the name of his church, Amen. High Praise Worship Center, and um, you know he's been a, he's been a leader apostolically and in, in warfare praise and worship for many years. But he's recently written a book called Voices. I say Voices. 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 And the whole thesis of his of his um, books is about learning to hear the voice of the Father. You know, they're singing that song. I prayed, He listened. Amen. And he answered. Amen. And uh, but hearing the voice of the Father. But at the same time, there's a lot of other voices speaking. And so you have to be sure, amen, that you're hearing the voice of the Father. And not voices of distractions, voices of insecurity, voices of pain, voices of shame, you know, false teaching. You're not hearing the media altogether. Amen. But you truly are hearing the voice of the Father. But learning to discern all of the other voices. That you have to filter out so that you can hear that pure word, amen, of what God is saying yes. to you, amen. amen. And so I might recommend that book if that's okay, Pastor. Amen. Yes. Called titled Voices, amen. But what I'm hearing the Lord speak, you know, in this season, all right, see napkins here. What I'm hearing is is a new wave of glory coming. Yes. Let somebody say a new wave of glory. A new, new wave, wave of glory. Amen. And it's not just one wave, it's going to be wave after wave after wave after wave. I like the song that we were singing. You know, God, we need more fire. We need the Holy Ghost and fire. God, we need more. <laughs> well, we need revival. We need more of it. Amen. And I believe this is a season when we begin to cry out, God. God, pour out more in my life. Amen. Not only to impact our church, what we call what we call the church, amen, but impacting your personal lives, your home, your jobs, amen, the things that pertain to you. God will revolutionize the vision and the dream that he's given you, amen. amen. I believe a true apostles and prophets, amen, and those that are speaking the, the word of the Lord, amen, should be encouraging the body of Christ, amen, that there's nobody greater than you. <laughs> Look at somebody say, there's nobody greater than you. There's nobody greater than you. Come on, you have, to, you have to realize, amen, that you are washed by the blood of Jesus, filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Nothing was restricted, nothing was restrained from you. You can walk in full dominion, full authority, full power. All things are under your feet. He's made you to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Come on now. He's made you to be superior, amen, to all the works of the enemy. You are endowed. You are empowered with the Holy Ghost for signs, wonders, and miracles, healing, deliverance. Come on now. For leading people into salvation. Amen. amen. Bringing people to the to the cross of Calvary. Yes, amen. Yes. You may not be assigned as a five-fold minister, but we are all ministers of the kingdom of God. When Matthew chapter 18, God did not say send the apostles, prophets to the nations. He said, all, all, all of you, amen, that have received Christ, go ye into all the world and preach this message of the kingdom of God. So it doesn't matter say you are called. You are called. We are all called. And I believe as we begin to realign ourselves with the authority <coughs> and our identity in Christ, amen, this is a new season of breaking out, a new season of breaking forward, and we're, I really believe we're going to have to just shake off, you know, and maybe even some old teaching and maybe some things that was purposed to get us into a particular place, but now, amen, we're into a new land of freedom, amen? And so, uh, God has us in a, a new place this morning. But new waves of God's glory. I believe I heard the Lord speak in my spirit. He said this new wave of glory, amen, that is coming, it, it is, will only come through prayer and fasting. Everybody say prayer. Amen. 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 Through steadfastness. Steadfastness. Go ahead. Say steadfastness. Amen. Amen. Say the next word. Kingdom warfare. 
Amen. Amen. So we have these five elements, amen, that are going to require us to begin to demonstrate, amen, to break through into the glory that God's releasing on the earth. Amen. When the Bible says the hunger and thirst after righteousness, you literally have to hunger. You really have to thirst. You really have to ignite a fire on the inside of you, amen, and begin to chase after, amen, the kingdom of God in this season, amen. So I pray that you're you're hearing that hearing that word of the Lord and let God begin to inspire, amen. Let God begin to ignite a fresh fire on the yes. inside of you, yes. amen. Yes. I was sharing out of Haggai chapter uh, two uh, on Friday night, amen. And for those of you that were here, you got to hear that, amen. But for those that were not here, amen. Uh, the Haggai, the prophet, was given an assignment to literally shape Israel. Amen. Shape the people of God. Why? Because they had an assignment. They were sent, amen, with an assignment to relay the foundation and to rebuild the temple of God. Come on now. <laughs> what happened was, now Pastor Carol, in her prayer, when she prayed for everybody just a few moments ago, she used the term, I break every distraction <laughs> and things that would try to get you off course. Amen. So what happened to Israel was they got distracted. And rather than building the kingdom of God, they begin to build their own kingdoms. Come on now. We can call that isolation, separation, abandonment. We can call it a number of different things. But they begin to build their own world and they forgot their assignment that really they were sent to build the kingdom of God. Look at somebody say, don't forget your assignment. Don't forget, Don't forget why you're in that business you're in, why you're in that church you're in, why you're in that city you're in, why you're in the community that you're in, because you are set for such a time as this, amen, to be builders and establishers of the kingdom of God. But Israel got so caught up on building their own houses, come on now, and building their own reputation and made it all about them that they forgot their assignment that I'm here to build the kingdom of God. Come on now. And so Haggai the prophet began to release the word of the Lord to Israel. And he said, how do you see, I'm paraphrasing for you, Haggai chapter 2. He said, how do you see the church today compared to yesterday? Compared to five years ago, ten years ago? How, how do you see this present truth move of God, this this restoration move of God, how do you see it today compared to the charismatic removal, compared to the prophetic movement, compared all the way back to the Anabaptist movement? How do you see this today? Do you see it as lesser or something less? Come on now. Than what you've experienced in the past. Oh God, I remember when we gathered as hundreds and thousands, and I can you can remember falling out in the spirit every time that you went to church, and you can remember all, and sometimes we're looking for that old to be revealed today when God says, I brought an end to that era, and now I'm gonna do a new thing. Come on now, and you're stuck over here in an old mindset. Israel was stuck in an old mindset. Come on now. And so he sends the voice of the Lord, and he begins to shake them, and the prophet prophesied, and he said, I tell you the truth, that, that the glory of the latter house shall supersede, come on, the former house. Come on now. What you experienced in the past is nothing. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the magnitude of the glory of God that is yet to be revealed upon the earth. But we're still looking at the old and comparing where you're at. Come on now. And if you'll do that, you'll feel like a failure. You feel like you missed it. You feel like you fell out of the boat. Come on, you'll feel like you'll feel like you're on the backside. Come on. But God says, no, you're just on a journey. Come on now, and I'm shifting you from the old to the new. And new waves of glory is coming. Yeah. Well, and what you have had in the past is nothing compared to what God is going to do in the months, years, and in the future of the kingdom of God. Amen? So new waves of glory is coming. Amen? But it's going to take prayer. It's going to take fasting. It's going to take purpose. Purposefulness. It's going to take steadfastness. It's going to take that kingdom warfare, amen, to break through to that next level. Look at somebody say, Breakthrough. Break through. Break through. I'm going to break through 
to that next level. And I'm going to turn over to the book of Isaiah, if you want to turn down your Bibles with me. Amen. And we have been in this scripture many, many, many times. Amen. Go to the book of Isaiah. Amen. Again. And uh, reminding Israel of where they have come from, what they have come through, and yet, in a sense, giving them rebuke. Okay, but at the same time, turn around and giving them a promise. If we'll hear the rebuke or if we'll hear the correction that God is speaking into our lives, come on now, then we can hear the instruction that God is releasing to us. Come on. If you're not willing to hear the correction, you probably won't hear the instruction. <laughs> I don't know. There's got to be a message now. I'm sure. <laughs> Amen. But in verse 18, and you've read this many times before, he said, do not. Everybody say, do not. No. That wasn't a suggestion. This is a command. <laughs> Come on. He said, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. In other words, God is trying to speak to Israel here that I'm getting ready to bring fresh waves of revival, fresh waves of anointing, fresh waves of faith, fresh waves of my grace, Amen. fresh waves Amen. of miracles. Fresh waves of the supernatural, fresh waves of, 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 of financial of prosperity, fresh waves of relationships. Come on now. Fresh waves of vision. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just begin to flood over you. And that's what I'm hearing the Lord say this year for all of those that will fast and pray and that will be steadfast and, and have purpose in your heart. Come on now. And you begin to wage warfare against the work of the enemy rather than cry baby and need a baby bottle all the time. Come on now. Get on your feet. So will you suffer? Somehow we think we're coming into an era of time where there'll be no suffering. No, there's a price to pay to yeah. get where you're at. Yes. Come on now, you can deliver a beautiful baby, but there's a price to pay to deliver that baby. <laughs> Come on now, there's a process that you go through. Unfortunately, too many people want to sidetrack the, the processes. Yeah. Come on now, look at somebody say, no sidetracking. No, God is serious in this season. I'm telling you, the waves of glory is coming, but the ones that are going to receive it are those that are going to purpose in their heart. Those that are the ones that are going to be steadfast, doing spiritual warfare. Amen. Activate. Yeah, but we're so looking back at the old. You know, I'm afraid we're wanting the. You know, I'm afraid we're wanting that. We're wanting some of the old. Come on out. And when the new thing begins to come, we begin to rebuke it. Why? Because we're not familiar with it. Come on now. So God wants to break you out of an old spirit of familiarity and be so familiar with your past that you're not even willing to look at the future. Come on now. God said, behold, I will do a new thing. And now I believe he's speaking 5784 in the Hebrew calendar, uh, 2024. Amen. In our calendar. Amen. That now it shall spring forward. Come on now. I believe this year, amen, is a breaking forth of fresh waves of revival. Let me just put this little insert right here. When we hear the voice of the Lord, and I believe the consensus of prophets is, is pretty accurate. You know, if we're looking throughout the nations, if it was one here, one there, no, but a consensus of prophets throughout the nations Amen. Our sensing that we're coming into one of the greatest end time harvest of souls that the world has ever seen. Amen. Come on, I believe that. Yes. There may not be appear to you that people are listening or that uh, things are not happening, but I'm telling you, yeah. God is stirring the waters and people that are wandering in <laughs> sin and darkness and, and in all types of, of devastating situations. Wow. There's a move of yeah. God of deliverance that's going to deliver them. Going to set the captives free. Come on now. And we're going to see revival fire like yes. we're saying. Keep singing that song. Come on. Keep the green. And amen. Yes. God, we need more. We need more Holy Ghost revival amen. fire. Come amen. on now. Uh, but the consensus is we're right in a season of the end time harvest of souls. Amen. Of signs, wonders, and miracles. We've preached it. We've taught it. We have prayed it. But I'm telling you, it's going to be demonstrated. And here's the exciting thing. Come on. The church is still looking for Apostle Leon or for somebody else to do the signs, wonders, and miracles. 
I'm not also together sure if God does not restrict us to a degree so that focus will be upon the church and the church will begin to demonstrate the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I received a, a prophecy one time. It's probably been 25 years ago, maybe 30. From Bishop, Bishop Bill Hemmen. Amen. But a, a word of the Lord that he prophesied over me. He said, Apostle Leon, uh, God is filling you with signs, wonders, and miracles. And even though you don't work them yourself, amen, you'll be able to activate them in other people. And I was so excited. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. <laughs> what was wrong with that word? You know, I'm excited that everybody else, but hey, I'm a part of this too. <laughs> Come on. I want to see the miracles as well. Come on now. Amen. So, so the prophet is speaking here. He said, don't even consider old things. Behold, I will do a new thing. You know, I enjoy, I'm sure some of you have watched some of the, you know, the what do-overs, makeovers, takeovers, all this stuff. <laughs> Everybody's familiar with all that stuff, right? If you're doing any work on your house, you're probably going to watch a program on TV and get some ideas from some things, you know. And um, I used to do a lot of construction in my earlier years, and uh, I still like to play with it once in a while. But uh, you know, about making old things new and trying to fix things up, and and, and I've done, done a lot of restoration work, stuff like that. And so I understand all of that, but also it can become a mindset that I can somehow take where I am, what I am, what I have, and make that to fulfill the promise. You know what? Abraham could not make Ishmael fulfill the promise of Isaac. God said, no, I'm not compromising here. And, and Abram, actually in Genesis 17, come up with come up with a good idea for God. Anybody had ideas for God? <laughs> had a few? Hey God, let me let me give you a couple ideas here. This might help us get through this, right? Anybody got some good suggestions? <laughs> I'm sure you do. I have some. Amen. But Abram's suggestion was, hey God, you know what? I'm a hundred years old. And mama, you know, she's pushing a hundred. You know what I mean? Not not likely, God. That the Isaac is going to come through us. And I'm sure there's going to be an Isaac, but too, not too likely at our age. I got an idea for you, God. Would you consider Ishmael? I mean, he's my son, my firstborn. <laughs> Ishmael, a man, can fulfill that promise of Isaac. How do you remember God's response? I can tell you, if you want the child, I'll tell you his response. His response was very simple. Two, two letter word and you can see and, and it's in its big caps in the Bible come on now because because there's there's emphasis put on it and God said no that's all he said no <laughs> there's not going to be a sidetrack an Ishmael is not going to be a makeover a do-over is not going to build what I'm telling you to build I'm saying no there is an Isaac. There is a promise. There is a will. There is a purpose. And I'm not going to compromise what yeah, my purpose yeah. is. And I believe yeah. God speaking that to the church and to glory points and to wherever you're from here this morning. If they're Bible believing, God fearing, earth shaking, come on now, kingdom, kingdom ministries, apostolic, prophetic, moving in present truth, amen, looking to the future. If they're in that vein, come on now. God is saying no to the old. Come on now. And he says, open up your heart. Open up your door. Get rid of your old mindset. Get rid of some of the uh, one one preacher termed it stinking thinking or whatever. I don't care for that. But whatever it is that that is trying to mess up that pure voice of God, amen, that is speaking on the inside of you. God saying no to the old. Come on now. And he said, I want you to open your door to the new thing that I want to do. No, what God's going to do is going to be so revolutionary, amen, it is going to, it's going to stir the kingdom of God in a brand new way. Oh, that revival fire. <laughs> I'm telling you, the, the revival now won't look like the revival of old. Sometimes when we sing that, we think of past revivals. They were great. But according to Haggai the prophet, they were great. But nothing like this revival that is coming. Come on now. But you know, God's got to break us out of old mindsets. 
But here's another problem. The other problem is, is that we get so familiar with what we have experienced and where we have been and where we are that we get comfortable in our familiarity. And so you will begin to dream, plan, and structure your faith according to your comfort zone. Everybody say limitation. limitation. And you create your own limitation all around you. Come on, if I could shake you and rattle your brains today, come on, I would challenge you, begin to think outside of your comfort zone. Come on now. If you could dream as big as you could dream and think as far out there, you say, Apostle, it would be ridiculous to think that. If you could think millions of dollars rather than trying to get hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, oh, Apostle, that would be, there's no way that I could ever get a million dollars. Come on, with God walk. All, all things are possible. Say that again. With God, all, all things are possible. It's our limitation, not his. Come on now. I just believe that God's trying to break us out of familiarity, out of our old mindsets. Come on now and begin to hear the pure promises of God. Come on now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on now. But if you will dream outside of your familiarity, outside of your comfort zone and you dream as big as you can let's say money was not a problem people wasn't a problem vision wasn't a problem nothing was a no hang-ups nothing in your way you had multi millions of dollars i mean I, everything is absolutely possible to you then in the natural if you was in that position what god is saying in the scripture he said it's at that juncture amen that I will do exceedingly and great things above and beyond what you're able to think or even imagine. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's not speaking that uh, when you're at the bottom of the well <laughs> or at the bottom of the basement. No, he's speaking that when you're on the very ground. It's at that juncture that I'm able to do even greater than that. No, I just believe God's going to shake the churches here and shake some things up, amen, to break us out of some old mindset. So Haggai the prophet began to prophesy, and he said that I will shake heaven, I will shake earth, and, uh, and, the, and the glory, amen, uh, will begin to supersede the past glory. And that word glory in Haggai uh, is kabod. It is not meaning, you know, like a cloud of smoke that makes you dizzy and pass out. Come on now. Or just uh, just excited. No, it means honor. It means favor. It means wealth. It means family. It means healing. It means friendship. Come on. It means supernatural favor, supernatural breakthrough. And the glory of this latter house shall supersede the glory of the past. Come on now. Look at somebody say, get ready. Get ready. <laughs> Some of you are looking at me like, you're preaching something. I can't live there. I'm telling you, you have to choose to walk by faith and not by sight. Come on now. You have to choose to step out of that place of limitation and begin to dream the dreams of your father, God. Amen. The Bible says that in the beginning, God, in the beginning, you know, you know, God didn't plan the church. You know, progressively, you know, and the church didn't just evolve. God planned the church from the very beginning. <laughs> say from the beginning. From the very beginning. You say, how do you know that? Because the Bible says that God, Amen. He knows the He knows the end of a thing from the very beginning. Yes, Come on now. He knows where we're at. He knows where we're going. Come on now. He knows how you're going to react. He knows how you're going to respond. He knows when you're going to turn. He knows what he's going to do to try to turn you. Come on now. Come on. But you're going to have to cooperate with God this year. Amen. Come on now. Why? Because fresh waves of revival oh. are coming. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he said, I'll do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. <laughs> but shall you not know it? Question mark in the Bible. Come on. Shall you not know it? Question mark. Which evidences that there will be ears of people that will hear, but they will not respond because of doubt and unbelief. God knew that he was speaking to doubtful people, unbelieving. Israel was doubtful, unbelieving. Come on now. Here God is trying to shake them, rattle their cage, and stir them for a brand new thing. Come on. If I can stir you up this morning to get excited about doing something yes. new. Come on now.
Do it. Keep stirring. Stir her up. He said, I'll do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I pray that you're in the number. Come on now. What is that old song? When the saints go marching, oh yeah. Lord, I want to be in that number. Oh, <laughs> Remember that song? <laughs> I want to be. Oh God, I want to be. I want to be in that number, oh Lord, that that is not looking to the old or trying to live out of the past, but I'm living out of the future. Come on, if you're here this morning and you've, you've had the sacrifice and you've lost a loved one or a, a dear friend or a family member and they're they're no longer present here on earth, but they're present with Father. They're alive. They're well. I mean, they're fulfilling the kingdom. I know that we don't. We don't all together get to see that. We have to know that by faith, just like I have to know that I am saved by faith, yeah. not by works, lest man should boast. Come on now. But once you know that, come on now, we can release that. Amen. Fulfill the kingdom. Fulfill the purpose. Fulfill the eternal plans that God has for you. Amen. But until I get there, I've got to fulfill my assignment here on the earth. Come on. Too many people giving up on their assignment because of devastation, because of breakdown, because of setback, because of disappointment, because of failure, and all of these things. Come on now. And we give up in the race. Come on. Paul said, amen, run your race yes. so as to win. Come on. In other words, you got to be serious about the race that you're in. I was doing a conference in our church some years ago, and uh, I had a little brother in the church. I, I believe he was in his late 80s, or late 86 or something like that. And uh, I'm now 80, so yeah, he is about 86. So, uh, but he's saying, uh, and this little guy, short, bald headed, he, he looked aged. <laughs> and But guess what? During a worship service, he was running around the building, kicking <laughs> his feet up. I mean, he was releasing extravagant. What I call extravagant work, praise and work. Yeah. And I'm watching him for three nights of our of our services. And I'm like, I can't even get the young people to shuffle their feet and move. And here this little old guy is running around the building, you know. I had to step over and ask him. I said, You you don't mind sharing with me? Where are you getting all this energy? I can't even get the young people move. You got all this energy to run around the building and give a sacrifice of praise to God. Where are you getting all this energy from? He said, well, for me, it's easy. He said, my wife went home to be with Jesus two weeks ago, and I had a vision of heaven, and I heard a voice of heaven speak to me, and the voice said, if I can dance in heaven, you can dance on the earth. <laughs> Whoa. But, and a release me, and so I'm going to dance. I'm going to fulfill, you know, why God has me here. Come, on, we've got to step out of grief. We've got to step out of sorrow. We've got to step out of defeat. We've got to step out of the past. Come on now and say, God has a purpose. God has a plan. And he's going to release fresh waves of revival, fresh waves of anointing, yes. fresh waves of miracle, yes. fresh Amen. waves of provision, fresh waves of vision, fresh waves it. of opportunity. Come we on now. God's going to begin to flood his church. I'm praying. He said, when you pray, pray, my Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come on. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Listen, this is your breakout season. <laughs> come on. But you're, you're going to have to wage a warfare. I'm telling you, there's going to be opposition. There's going to be things that are going to front, confront you. There's going to be things that will try to disappoint you, things that will try to distract you, set you back. But you're going to have the purpose in your heart. I'm here for the purpose of God. Come on now. It's, it's a time when God, it's like a it's like a, a, a wake up to the church, a wake up call. Come on now. That this is what I'm bringing. But for you to enter into it, this is what you're going to have to do. Amen. And uh, I believe the consensus of the prophets is, is releasing that. Listen to this. He said, it will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Yes. yes. And the beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Say, I'm the chosen of God. I'm the chosen of God. Come on. So God said, well, whatever is impossible, I'll make you be able to prosper or overtake you. 
Come on, everybody say advancement. Come on. So we're in a time of advance for the church. So fresh waves of faith that God is releasing upon the earth. Able to let go of the old. Amen. And grasp hold of the new thing. Come on now. You know, I'm, I'm having to, at my age, you know, I was raised in construction business and used to do a lot of building. And I, I've done a lot of work in Denver, Colorado. But, uh, you know, and, and I still have an old mindset of how we've done things. Uh, I'm amazed at the creativity of products and things that you can get today that are so far more advanced than what it was back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Come on now. And I'm interested in this new thing. I love going to Lowe's and all these different places and Menards. And I like looking at all these new things, all these new gadgets, all the, wow, I can remember having to do that the hard way, but now there's an easier yes. way. Yes. Come on, we can try to live out of the old mold of that hard way. But listen, there's a fresh grace of God upon the earth. Amen. The Bible says that all creation belongs to God. Come on now. All information belongs to God. Amen. People use it and disperse it and some of it try to mess it up. Amen. But are all God's the owner. He's the CEO. Everything belongs to him. Come on now. And in a moment of twinkling eye, God can give a shift and take what the devil meant for harm and work it all together for your good. Holding right here on the screen. Come on now. That on the day of Pentecost, there was a powerful outpouring of of the Holy Spirit and it landed upon their heads like fire and cloven tongues and they all begin to pray in an unknown language. Come on now. And fresh fire was upon them. Well, the Bible says that it caused such a, such a, you might say a fiasco in the city, amen, that thousands of people were gathering around seeing something but didn't know how to get to it. I'm sure the same thing happened at Azusa Street in, in Los Angeles. Come on now. Back in the 1900s when God began to release another visitation of the Holy Ghost and fire. And the, the church with the, the outpouring began. Come on now. With just the beginning part like Jesus born. I'd rather have a roundabout. <laughs> Five point intersection. Nobody knows when to go. You yeah. Know, where's Rock? Where's Rock? <laughs> Who's next? You know. And uh, they don't put that in your driver's book. But anyway, <laughs> I'm at this intersection, and it is so busy, people going everywhere. And I just had to say, God, this looks like chaos. <laughs> God, how are you going to bring revival upon all Ooh. flesh? Come on, Holy Come on now. Come on, Holy and he reminded me of Joel chapter, it's going to be easy. He said, I'll release one sign in the heavens. People will get out of their cars. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Because somebody say, it's coming. It's coming. We have to reactivate our faith and stir our faith. In Joshua chapters 1 through chapter 4, begins to speak about a new wave of open doors, a new wave of refreshing, a new wave of possessing. Come on. This is when God sent an alarm throughout Throughout the camps of Israel, come on, and he said, wake up in three days. You're going to cross over this Jordan. <laughs> yes. All right, now. What's the problem with that? I can tell you the problem. What I see is the problem. The problem for me was they've been there 40 years. Yes. They've heard this prophecy how many times? <laughs> how many times has somebody come and said, you know, God's going to do it. God, you're going to cross over this Jordan. And they've heard it over and over to a point where they become dull of hearing to the word of the Lord. You spoke it. It never happened. We didn't see it. We say we believe it, but not really. Come on now. And then when the prophetic word of the Lord comes to the camp and it said, get yourself ready in three days, you're going to cross over this Jordan. Sure, God. And God begins to speak the word to you, a miracle in your life. You, sure, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were filled with doubt and unbelief, but the word of the Lord went through the camp. And this is what he said. He said, get up out of the place you've been in and go after the anointing. Come on. I, I like the part with, with uh, Isaac and, and Rebecca. In Genesis, where the Bible says that the camels were coming, and yeah. 
Isaac lifted up his eyes and he said, the camels are coming. The blessing is coming. Come on now. Because somebody said, my blessing is coming. He said, the camels are coming. And the Bible says that Rebecca lit off her camel or she jumped off her slid off her everything but fell off but she got off her camel come on now look at somebody say you have to get off your camel come on she had to get off the place she was in and israel had to get up out of the place that they was in so that they could go after the anointing come on and this is what god said keep your eyes on the ark of the covenant keep your eyes on the prophetic voice of the lord speaking throughout the earth come on now don't look to the right or to the left. You know, where we're at there in Versailles, just an hour and a half below us here. You know, we, we're still in some Amish territory. And so we still have a lot of horses and carriages that will get on the get on the main roads down there. And you have to be careful. But it's interesting because they use what they call blindfolders on the horses. Mm -hmm. Everybody familiar with that? Yeah. How about young people? How about young men? You familiar with the blindfolders? Yeah. And so they, they have these blindfolders. So that the horses are not distracted by the traffic going by, everything happening on the side. Come on. If the horse would have heard sound and kept looking, they'd be a wreck every day. Come on now. But the horses stayed their course. They're following after their assignment. Amen. Listening to the master. Amen. That's what God wants to do. He wants to activate your blinders. Amen. So that you will not be distracted. And that's what God told him in the word. He said, don't look to the right or to the left. In Joshua chapter 1, he told him the same thing. Don't look to the right or to the left. Keep your eyes on the ark of the covenant. And I love this. I love this what he said. He said, because... You have not come this way before. Come, when you get into a new way and God's calling you to a new thing, come on, you're going to have to stay focused on the kingdom of God. If you're not, you'll be distracted and try to get you off of your mouth. And you have to hear that pure voice of the Lord. Amen. Joshua chapter 5, amen, begins to speak about a new wave of purging, a new wave of maturing. What happened, Pastor David, when Israel crossed over? What was the th first thing that happened? Come on. First thing that was happened, he said, go to the mountain. Amen. I'm giving you an assignment. I want you to be sure every every male is circumcised. Come on now. And they had a they had a circumcision celebration, if there is such a thing. Come on. The Bible says that all these hundreds. Hundreds of warriors, amen, are laying on the mountainside, wiping in pain. <laughs> Come on now. The first thing that had to happen was purging. No, we're crossing over, church, but the reality is, is there will be a purging. Come on. There's a price that you have to pay. There's something that you have to go through. There. There's something that has to be cut away. There's something that has to be released. There's something that you have to let go of, amen, so that, amen, you could rise up. And then they went from there to Jericho. And guess what? <laughs> they went from writhing in pain to causing all pain to be heaped upon Jericho. You had, and because of the unity of their faith, amen, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Look at somebody say, your walls are coming. Hearing a word in your spirit that will move you. Come on now. That I, you know, I, I will not be held back. I'm not going to be cut off. I, God is, has me here for a purpose. I'm going to fulfill my purpose. Yes, it doesn't yes, matter Lord. about my age. It doesn't matter that I have a sciatic nerve. I'm going to preach anyway. Come on up. It doesn't matter what, what pain I've had to suffer. It doesn't matter that I got family members that are, are being threatened with cancer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we're walking through. We've got to yes. walk through it regardless. Come on. But I must keep my eyes on the kingdom of God. What is God's ultimate purpose come on the ultimate purpose is is that every every man woman boy and girl will begin to cry out to god and the righteous come on now will inhabit the earth the righteous will inhabit the kingdom of god revelation 11 14 come on. the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our lord and his Right. It may look like the real estate has the ownership. It may look like Woo! Japan has an ownership in America. It may look like different things and different situation. It may look like like General Motors, Amen, is is a leading corporate. It may it may look, but guess what? 
God is the CEO. He's the owner of it all. And that one breath, one touch, he shuts down, he builds up, he cancels out. Come on now. The rain, the snow, the hail, it all belongs to God. The Bible says that he literally has storehouses in heaven. Come on now. And if he chooses to release a hailstorm, he will do it. Come on now. In the hardest, hottest part of July. <laughs> Come on now. Look at somebody say, but God. But God. But God. God. God breaks through. Amen. So Joshua 5. And then in Joshua 5, 12, it says a new way to go after the anointing. The old, in this scripture, it says that the old manna has been cut off. The old manna has been stopped. And the new manna has been released. How many of you are hungry for new manna? Amen. Come on now. Let's see, Israel had to make a shift. Think about it. 40 years of clothes not wearing out. Wow. Well, just think about it. Try to imagine it if you could. Uh, that would drive all of us crazy. <coughs> we like to change clothes sometimes twice a day. <laughs> and sometimes more. But their clothes had no idea, right? Come on now. A hunger. You don't have to hunger. You got all the men you want. Food's provided for you all the time. You know, just, wow. you, you, know, you don't have to worry. I'm your I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm your provider. Come on. Yeah. I'm your creator. Come on. I'm creating everything for you. Come on. Yeah. But that's when God had to nurse them and he had to feed them and he had to baby them and he had to take care of them. But he said, when you cross over this Jordan, you're going to come into your own identity. Come on now. And you're going to discover that you're a powerhouse. You're going to discover that you're a man and woman of war. You're going to discover that you're a man and woman of faith. Come on. <laughs> you're gonna to have to go to Wally World, or you're gonna to have to go to Shoebox or whatever they call it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you're gonna to have to, you know, you're gonna to have to eat new manna. Come on now, everybody say new manna. New manna. Come on, but see, we're so hung, so hung up on the old that we yeah. lose vision of our purpose and what God <laughs> has called us to. He said, "Behold, I'll do a new thing, and now it shall." Spring forward. Now uh, there's so much more. Yeah. I'll have to let Pastor Carol probably preach the rest of this marriage. Is this a boyfriend, girlfriend on the front row, or brother and sister, or you're not brother and sister? Brother and sister in the Lord, maybe? <laughs> um, no. Boyfriend, girlfriend, or no, just like friends? Okay. <laughs> let me pray for the young man. Can I do that? Yeah. Can I pray for you? All right. You want to stand with me? You might. Do you have a telephone? I'm going to bring this chair out here for just a few here, moments. That's all right. Pastor David, can you help I, us? I've got it. It's good. Leave it right there. Yeah, yeah, right. You'll be good here. Thank you, sir. <coughs> you might watch me just. Everybody, stretch your Do you have your recorder? That Find that record Shane, on your do you phone. you have a phone that you can record this word for me? Yep. I want to be sure that, I want to be sure that you're recording. Amen. I'm just going to minister to a few people. And then I'm going to try to build just a little bit more with word, maybe a little bit faster. Believe me, I did not have all that in my notes. It's just what God was saying. So I pray that you're hearing it. We're here for this time. It's what we call prophetic preaching. What is God saying right here at this moment to the ears that are listening? Those that are online with us, amen. It's a fresh word to you as well. Amen. I, just, uh, I, I was looking out at you, and I just heard the Lord say, things are not the way that they appear. It's like there's some things going on in life right now. There's some restrictions. There's like some walls of opposition that the enemy tried to build around you. But God said, get your eyes off of the opposition. And God said, settle in on the position that I have you in right now. And God said, you do the best with what you have. And then I promised you I would give you greater and I would give you more, says the Lord. And God said, I have a plan, son, way beyond the day. Way beyond the way the things appear right now, says the Lord. And God said, but as you, if you would get alone with me, I want to give you some fresh downloads of heaven that will give you revelation, the Lord said, of a new level of preparation so that you can fulfill the destination that I've called you to. And God said, my hand is upon you. Your life is not an accident. But you could go even uh, genetically and go back down, you know, th through your life. And you could say, ooh, it'd be better if I'd have never been born. Well, God says, oh, no, I purposed you in heaven before you got to earth. Come on yeah. now. There's two things in life for sure that you don't get to choose. 
one thing you don't get to choose is when you're born and who you're going to be born to. The second thing is you don't get to choose when you're going to die or how you're going to die. The Bible says life and death sovereignly belong to God. Come on now. But God says that I purposed you in heaven. I brought you through the right channel. And you're here, says the Lord. And God said, a new day of grace is upon you. And now I will cause that faith. I'll cause that purpose to begin to rise upon you. Now listen, there's an entrepreneur gift of creativity on the inside of you. And God said, I'm going to begin to speak to you about that in dreams and visions. Sometimes there'll be day visions, there'll be night visions and dreams. I'm going to speak new things to you, says the Lord. And God said, I'm going to stretch you out of an old mold. And God said, I'm going to put your feet into a new race and we're going to up the pace, says the Lord. And God said, uh, you, God said, you're going to confront your enemy face to face. And God said, you will be the successor, says the Lord. There's a Davidic anointing upon you. God said, I've anointed you for worship and praise and song and sound and movement, says the Lord. And God said, uh, what looks so impossible to you, God said, with me, son, all things are possible. If you will just believe, God said, you will see my grace and my favor upon your life. You know, we come to a time of growing in our life. And uh, all of us do. And um, I recall you, son. Well, I'll be 34 in March. You'll be 34. You're young. You look young for your age. That's a good thing, all right? When you get 80, you'll appreciate that. <laughs> you, right now, you may wish like you were a little older so somebody would believe you. Amen. I can remember those years. Amen. But, you know, God has you right where he wants you. And you're in a making process, Romans 8, 28 and 29. Amen. That God is conforming you into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that, there's pain, there's suffering, there's sacrifice, there's joy, there's excitement, there's fulfillment, then there's uh, rejection and denial and abandonment and all of those. And all of those have, but all of those are tools to make you to be the man of strength that you are today. And so God said, I don't want you to have any regret that you've had to come the way that you had to come, says the Lord. And God said, through it all, I've made the man. But now, I just believe 2024, God said, it's going to be the year of a door for you. And I'm going to open the door. And God said, and I want you to walk through my faith, says the Lord. Now, I don't know if you've ever sang. I don't know if you've ever played an instrument or, or anything in your life. But I'm telling you, there's an anointing upon you for worship. And if you'll give yourself to it, God said, I will anoint it and I will cause it to, I will cause it to energize your spirit, says the Lord, and it will activate your faith and it'll put you into the race that I really called you to, says the Lord. So Father, I charge this young man by the power of your word right now. I just heard this. You have your plan, and God said, I have my plan. My plan supersedes your plan. Your plan is okay. But mine, God said is off the chart. And God says that if you'll submit yourself under the mighty hand of God, 1 Peter chapter 5, God says if you'll submit yourself under the mighty hand of God, God says that I will reveal, God says, every step that you take, and God said, I'll get you at the right place at the right time, says the Father. You know, God just bless this young man now, endow him, empower him, infuse him, and God, I take authority over everything that was purposed to abuse him, and I cast it down now in Jesus' mighty name, and I call forth life and that more abundantly to excel in the midst of this young man. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You receive that, young man? You receive that? You hear that? You hear that word? Amen. I don't know who the young lady is, but I want to pray for you. All right? Do we do you that? gotta record me like I did Jerry Lynn. I was only like, you know, I'm just playing. <laughs> okay, do you have your own record there? He could, we could do it together. <laughs> I was just playing. Like, <laughs> okay. All right, what's your name? My name is Shay. Is that? <laughs> Shay. Shay? Uh -huh. Don't match Shay. Amen. Everybody stretch your hand up to Shay here. Amen. Uh -huh. Shay, I'm hearing the word turnaround mm -hmm. as I pray for you. And uh, it's like you've been going one direction. Uh, and God says, now, I'm going to cause you to turn around. In other words, that I want you to see where you've come from, what you've come through. And God said, I want you to see uh, with clarity the vision, the purpose, uh, and the destiny that I have before you, says the Lord. The Bible says, without a vision, without a dream, people become ineffective or they just fall out of the race. 
uh, in one uh, one translation says they die. <laughs> and the, but God says that I'm putting a vision, a dream on the inside of you. And this year, I'm going to put your feet into a new stream of my glory, says the Lord. That's going to cause an excitement in your in your spirit. And uh, God said, I put um, an anointing of, of arts and I put an anointing of, of business upon you, says the Lord. And God said, there's some areas that you desire, but you have not yet fulfilled. And I hear the Lord say, you're getting ready to come into the fulfillment of things, says the Lord. And you really need to read that book on voices for sure. You know, you've, got to, you've, got to, you've got to separate out some voices that are speaking that almost tries to supersede the voice of the Lord. And God said, I want you to hear the purity of my voice, says the Lord. And I hear God say, I'm getting you on track. We're going to take up all the slack and you're going to take back. Everything that the enemy has tried to rob, steal, and kill, says the Lord. And God said it will be a new season of vision, a new season of purpose. Now, I can see, Donna don't, don't just showed me a scale, and the natural scale will, it, it looks like skyrocket. And so God said your prosperity and your fulfillment is comes through, God said, that ministry call and that purpose call that I have upon your life. That comes through when I was sharing with you, steadfastness, purpose of vision, amen, and spiritual warfare, fasting and prayer. God said, you give yourself this year and you're going to open doors of opportunity and reposition and recondition. Amen. And so God said, my favor is upon you. My amen. grace is going before you. But I want you to really pray. And I want you to look at that scale. And God <laughs> said, let me help you balance out the scale, says the Lord. Yes. And my scale will cause your scale to prevail. Says the Lord. Father, I just charge this daughter of Zion by the power of your word right now. God, just saturate her with the power of your love and the power of your grace right now, Lord, that delivers, that sets free, that empowers, that enhances, and that influences her in a whole new dimension. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Is God good? Amen. Pastor Cheryl, I want to pray for you back there. Amen. Jan she come out. Pastor Carol, I'm going to ask you. If you or elder or uh, could just go back and lay hands on her, amen. Uh, while I pray for uh, Pastor Cheryl back there, is everybody praying in the spirit? Come on, uh, uh, pray in the spirit. Just be praying, believe, stir up your faith, activate your faith right now in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pastor Cheryl, I hear a, a fresh word of the Lord uh, coming to you, and the Lord says you've done well. And God said, uh, uh, the enemy uh, tried to raise up a standard against you. And the Lord said, it came tumbling down. And it was like, if he couldn't get you in your hell, then he tried to get you financially. And if he couldn't get you that, then attack after attack. But the Lord says now, God said, the attack is going to be heaped upon the head of your enemy, says the oh, Lord. Yeah. And God said, I'm activating uh, in you again. The Lord said, the heart of the warrior, says the Lord. And God said, I want you, daughter, to literally take back what the enemy's tried to rob, steal, and kill. Take back your weapons of war. Take back your confession. Take back your faith. Take back your vision. And get yourself back in the race, says the Lord. And God said, I will continue to increase the pace. And the Lord said, you're, you're not going to uh, run out. You're not going to run to the right or to the left. But God said, you're going to be right on focus, right on target. Now, listen. Uh, Pastor Carol was alluding uh, in her prayer about the about angel angel armies and and activating the angels of, on assignment. And I hear the Lord say, "I want you to begin to command angel armies and the warriors of heaven." Says the Lord. And uh, Isaiah chapter hmm, forty-five says that, uh, "Command me, command the head the work of God." Said my word. God said, "You're going to see my word fill." I really feel two thousand. And 24, God said, it's going to be a year of the more, and you're going to be in better health by the end of that. But God said, I don't want you to live out of that. I want you to live out of this dream that I'm putting on the inside of you. And the Lord said, the rope. So God said, but you're going to have to settle it in your own heart a spirit. Coming back again to this prophetic word. You're going to have to purpose in your heart. You're going to have to be steadfast. Come on now. You're going to have to do spiritual warfare. You're going to have to activate you know, those elements of faith. And God said, you activate it, and I will fulfill it, says the Lord. Now, I just hear the Lord say, a double portion anointing of the prophetic. It's like God's going to take the prophetic gift that is in you, Pastor Cheryl, 
and he's going to multiply it double upon your life, says the Lord. And I just, I see you on the phone. I see people are going to call. I believe you're going to have the assignments. Will you call? Amen. And pastor's going to ask you, will you take this assignment? Will you do that assignment? The natural could say, I really don't feel up to it. The Lord says, I don't want you moved by feeling. I don't want you moved by fright. I don't want you to move by the things you see or the things you have. I want you to be moved by the will and purpose of the kingdom. Come on, you're stepping into a kingdom anointing, Pastor Cheryl. And God said, that's going to be your weapon of war. And God said, I'm putting the enemy under your feet, says the Lord. And again, you're going to hit the street. And God says, devils are going to flee every direction, says the Lord. So no inspiration. Oh, listen, I just heard my spirit tell you, God said, this is your time. I want you to begin to write. Amen. So I don't know if you are writing, but there's some writing that you need to do. I've kind of felt like God's going to give you about three or four themes. Amen. And I just want you to write on those three or four themes. And a small book that I saw. Son, will you grab one of those little books there for me? Right there on that roll. Amen. Just hand one to me. Amen. Just, it's just uh, what I saw, like four, three or four themes. that would be little books like this. Amen. Oh. Quick reads. Amen. That will drop a revelation and encouragement. Uh, uh, help people meet their their destination. Amen. But I see you producing those. And God said, on your journey. And God said, it's going to bring joy. It's going to bring refreshing. And God's going to open a door of financial blessing to you. Amen. Look, sometimes in life, church, we get into a place. I can't see it from my mom and daddy. I can't see it from my job. I can't see it from this. I, I just can't see how it can come. God said, I'm a supernatural God. Everything in the earth belongs to me. And God said, I, God said I'm able to create money for you. I'm not talking about, y'all understand that they are legal here. What, what, God does is not illegal. what God does is not illegal. Now, people don't like what God does. Amen. But, but, in the days of Paul, the people didn't like what God was doing because he was shutting down their resources so he could release kingdom resources. Amen. I'm just telling you, God says, I'm going to give you a financial miracle and breakthrough, says the Lord. Oh, Father, and God, that the enemy is under her feet. In Jesus' name, we pray. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. My brother on the back row right here, a good-sized man. Amen. Stephen. Is Stephen? Stephen. Yeah. Stephen. 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 All right, Steve, are you alone, Steve? Or are you with family? Or? I got family. Pardon? I got family, my wife, my mother-in-law. That's your wife? Wow, do you claim him? <laughs> <laughs> she better. <laughs> most this, time. Yeah, most time. All right. Well, so that means we got some area we can work on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so and this is your mother? My mother in law. Yeah. Your mother in law. Okay. Good. Good. My mother. Your mother. Thank you. Your wise man. <laughs> Amen. So we want to pray for them. Just pray for you as a family. Amen. Just stretch your hand back there and now we got Steve, and your wife's name is Marilyn. Marilyn? Oh, I have a sister-in-law named Marilyn. All right, so, and I'll get to mom in just a moment. But uh, you all want to stand with me so I can see you clearly? All right. Thank you, Lord. Is everybody all right? We're not in a typical church service. I guess you guys perceive that already. Especially people that are online with us. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not used to preaching with a cord. It's been a long time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But go ahead and put your arms around your wife, brother. Just so. arms or arm. Or just hold her close. Amen. She's the bride. Amen. And um, she's a type of the church. You know, the Bible commissions us, husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. You know, so there's a responsibility that God puts on us as men. Amen. To care for our family and our household. I just hear the Lord speaking to you, Steve. And he says, son, I'm getting ready to cause a major shift in your life. You've heard me speaking about ways, ways of purpose, ways of breakthrough, ways of anointing, ways of blessing, ways of provision, ways of, of restoration. 
And God says, son and daughter, I will restore back to you the years that the kinko and the caterpillar and the locust has tried to eat away, says the Lord. Brother, there's a call and a purpose of the apostolic, a call of God upon your life, things that you have not yet fulfilled. And I get to see the heavy-handedness of men, of people, of leaders and uh, in your past. The Lord said they were like old wet blankets that kept you at one level. Now, I'm telling you, God is going to put you in his race, and God said, we're going to up the pace. And God said the enemy is going to have to pay for everything that he tried to rob, steal, and kill, says the Lord. And God said, son, I want you to get back in your prayer closet, and that Holy Ghost and fire that we were singing about is going to visit you. You're going to have divine visitations of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to reignite the fire and the prayers that was prayed for you before you was even born, says the Lord. And God said, uh, you're going to be a one that will end enhance my revival up on the earth. And you're going to be harvesters of souls of hurting, uh, bleeding people, says the Lord. And God said, you'll see them restored to life and the purpose of the song we were singing, you're going to live again, says the Lord. And God said, everything that the enemy purposed against you is now working for you, says the Lord. And brother, in that apostolic, there's going to be a strong prophetic mantle anointing upon your life. And God said, you're going to prophesy, and you're going to speak the word of the Lord. And God says that instantly. God said, you're going to see heaven shake, earth shake. I will shake everything around you, says the Lord. And God said, son and daughter, what the enemy has wrongfully taken from you is going to have to come back to you seven times greater, says the Lord. And God said, you're coming into a new season of fulfillment. Now listen. We grow, we're edgy, we're nasty, we're raised by our parents, hopefully everybody stays home until you're raised by your parents, amen, but we're, we're raised into a family, we go to school, we're trained, and we get in the marketplace, and we go to another level of training, but we go through seasons and chapters of training all of our life, all of you have been there and are there right now, amen, but we can become so accustomed to the training of the natural that it seems to sidetrack us from the training of the supernatural. Now, I'm not talking about just going to church and just hearing a message or just being paying your tithe. I'm talking about being the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. You are not here, son and daughter, just to exist in the earth. You are here to bring transformation. You're here to bring change. You're here to bring a kingdom shift. Yes. says the Lord. And God says, I'm enlarging the capacity of your heart. The Lord said to receive a bigger dream and my dream and my vision of heaven, says the Lord. And God said, yet at this age and stage, I will activate my kingdom anointing upon you, says the Lord. And God said, you're not waiting on me. You thought you were, but I'm waiting on you, says the Lord. And so God says, I want you to do like Brother Moses. Amen. <laughs> Take your shoes off your feet because you're standing on holy ground, says the Lord. And God said, the fire of the Holy Spirit, God said, and those visitations of my anointing are going to cause a kingdom shift in your life, in your family, in your household. What the enemy tried to shatter, scatter, and divide, and tear apart, I will gather back together, says the Lord. And the glory of the latter will far supersede the former, says the Lord. So God said, it's a new faith for you. And God said, if you will hear my voice, and you'll, God said, if you'll be a responder, God said, and an activator, you'll see the salvation of the Lord. And since I hear the Lord say, there's a deep groaning of the Holy Spirit in the inner, inner midst of your spirit. And God said, it's the groaning of intercession. It's the groaning of a, of a warrior, says the Lord. And God says that it's a groaning of prophetic visions and dreams. And the Lord said, you're coming into a new season of activation, and I'm going to activate my anointing upon your life to a higher level, says the Lord. And God said, what looked like was on hold is coming off hold, says the Lord. But I want you, speak to the airways, speak to the heavens, speak to the earth, says the Lord, and begin to command my blessing, command my anointing, and you'll see the salvation of the Lord. There's a powerful healing that God's releasing in your body, and God said, you're not going backwards. You're going forward, says the Lord. You're yeah. just going through a process. But the Lord said, I'm in the midst of the process. 
I've been there, but I'm on the other side of it as well, says the Lord. Father, just charge them right now by the power of your grace. And I pray, God, that they hear this. Lord, they can hear this, they can activate this, or they can wait years and hear it again and then try to activate it years down the road. But right now, now, now is the day of salvation. Now day is the transformation. Now is the time, says the Lord. Father, bless them by your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And for your mother, what's your mother's name? Beverly. Beverly. Beverly? Amen. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands back to Beverly there. Beverly, you can stay sitting and I'll, I'll sit with you. How's that? Amen. Shara <laughs> Kahasa. Tell me if you're recording. Praise the Lord. We're recording? Janta, they're working on it back there? I'm praying that they was recording for theirs. Okay. I have it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Let's see. Are you recording back there? Are you recording? Okay, she, we're getting right there. Okay. Are we all related or yeah, friends? Yeah, oh, that's your mother. Oh. My sister and my brother. Well, okay. Okay. Well, mom could be ten one daughter. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Who shot out at that's what I do that one time, then they run off with their word. Okay. <laughs> mom ain't gonna let that happen. All right. <laughs> Even Beverly, let me just tell you what I could see in the spirit realm. I could see like new territory. Now, God's not speaking about geographical in the natural. I feel he's speaking in the spiritual new territory. And God said there's spiritual territory that you're going to begin to possess in this chapter of your life. And the Lord said, as you get along with me and just meditate, just meditate, enter into a place of rest. The Lord was trying to teach me about intimacy. Everybody needs to hear this about intimacy, and he said this simple thing to me. He said, I said, God, I'm not sure how to have intimacy with you. He said, you can start by being quiet. <laughs> so, all right, okay. amen. That's your first battle is learning to be quiet before the Lord. And God said, as you get quiet before me, God said, I'm going to cause a new sound to begin to be heard in your spirit, says the Lord. And God says that I, I'm going to give you a master plan, God said, for every day. That you're upon the earth, says the Lord. And God said, your eyes are going to get to see salvation in your household, in your family, and transformation in your in your own territory, says the Lord. But God said, I, I put an anointing, uh, the Lord said, that you can, you can prophesy to spheres, says the Lord. And God said, you can activate kingdom transformation and kingdom <laughs> says the Lord. And God said, this is not a time to retire, but let me ignite a fire on the inside of you, says the Lord. And I will cause you to aspire higher in this season of your life. More, I get to see wave to wave of blessing coming back into your life. God's going to bless your children. He's going to bless your family. And they're going to bless you. They're going to say, you know what? I pay my tithes in church. I give the preacher's offerings. I do this for the all that. But I'm going to bless mama. And the Lord said, you're going to see inheritances begin to come to you in this age and stage, says the Lord. Now listen, God's going to shake up your closet. Come on now. now naturally, I haven't seen your closet, naturally. You know what I mean? But you've seen your closet, and you like your closet. Come on now. But some of your closet needs to be updated. And God said, I'm going to show you how to update some things in your closet, says the Lord. I believe what God is saying to you, Beverly, is that God says, behold, I will do a new thing. And sometimes you have to buy and break out of that limitation, break out of that familiarity, so that you open the door for a new thing. Beverly, I hear the Lord say, I'm going to use you as a door opener in the body of Christ. That's interesting, because we're right now in 5784, which means door, opening, portal, gateway, amen, or an opening, and God said, I'm going to use you to be an opener of the doors uh, in the future, says the Lord. So God said, it's a new day, old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new, says the Lord, dear God. Amen. Are we okay? We're good. We're great. Okay, just making sure. You doing sure. good? <laughs> just, just making sure. Everybody stretch your hand back to Beverly. Beverly, we, we just charge her. God, in her health, Father, in her energy, in her strength, in her vision. Lord, you're going to plant her rock solid. She'll be unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. I do know this, Beverly, that God's going to use you as a, a key leader in your family. Now, I don't know where you go to church. I don't know 
I don't, you know, let me just tell you what I'm sensing. Is that you do not need to be a number on a on a church roll. You need to be on a church roll. You don't just need to be a number. You don't need to be one that sits on a particular side, particular bed, and that's going to be that's what you're going to do. No, 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 no. No, you're going to be a kingdom destroyer. God said that it's going to bring energy. It's going to bring life. Souls are going to be saved. People are going to be healed because Beverly has a fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. And, and God said, this is your time. And God says that like Caleb of old, go ahead and cry out. When he was 85 years old, he said, I'm stronger today, more able today than I was when I was a younger man. And God said, daughter, you're more able, stable, capable today than you've ever been in your life says the Lord. Father, I charge this woman yes. of God. Ignite a fire on the inside of her, yes. oh God, that will pull down the powers of darkness that will activate the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God, God bless her. Amen. I have a I have a, a couple uh, online that I want to pray for. Uh, Pam and Samson. Samson. Amen. Hart. Uh, Pam and Samson Hart. You know, I've met you over the years, amen, uh, Pam and Samson, and can they see me on the camera yeah. okay? Yes. Okay, so I'm looking out there, but they're over here, right? <laughs> yes. All right, well, it helps to look at the camera, amen. But uh, uh, Pam and Samson, I hear the word, uh, the Lord says, of, I'm going to shake the heavens, I'm going to shake the earth, and I'm going to shake things around you. And in my spirit, it's like in the last almost 10 years, uh, you settled into some things, and it's been progressive, a little here, a little there, but it's like the enemy's trying to take territory in your health or trying to take territory in your family or in your inheritance or in your vision. And the whole purpose is, is to, try to, to uh, try to evade it or try to wipe it out. But hear the Lord say, Pam, I'm igniting that Holy Ghost fire of the prophetic on your spirit again, says the Lord. And God said, I'm bringing you back to life again. Hear that song by Dean Mitchum, I'll live again, I'll live again, I'll live again. And the Lord says, daughter, you'll live again. And God said, you're not just going to live the way you are, you're going to live the way I purposed you to, says the Lord. And God said, when it's time for me to take you away, there will be a shout in heaven and a shout on earth, says so, and, th and this will be my routine. God's going to break a spirit of routines off of your household. And God said, I'm going to inspire vision in you once again. And you're going to get up. You're going to run again. You're going to go again. You're going to do again, says the Lord. And by the way, Pam, you've made an investment in the kingdom of God. And the Lord said, your bread is out on the waters just waiting for you to prophesy to it. Someone else needs to hear this. Your bread has been cast upon the waters. It is just waiting for you to prophesy, waiting for you to speak to it, and it'll come rolling back in on every wave, says the Lord. And it's not going to come back the same way you cast it out. It's going to come back uh, with a, a, a good increase, says the Lord. It's been making interest in all this time that it's been out there. And I just I hear God say, this is a new day of favor and a new day, of, new time of an open door. And God said, uh, you, you're going to see heaven on earth as it is in heaven, says the Lord. And for Samson, I just see the Lord healing uh, some things emotional and some things in just in, in a way of thinking and some thought processes. And it's like God's going to revolutionize some things uh, that's going to bring him into a fresh alignment of the Holy Spirit. And uh, there's going to be new assignments for you in this uh, stage and age, says the Lord. And God said, as things try to progressively wear you down, I'm releasing things to progressively build you up, says the Lord. You know, sometimes you have to go through the same steps that you got yourself into something to get out of something. Amen. But it is God. Everybody say it's God. It's God. But it's God in the process, amen, that graces you to be able to come out of the place you've been in to the higher place that I called you to. And so God said this will be a new time of favor. Fresh anointing upon your family, upon your household, and just you just hear so strong for the two of you. God said, I have not forgotten. Heaven Amen. has not yes. forgotten. Yes. You've made a contribution, and I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about of your life. You've made a yes. contribution yes. into my kingdom. Heaven remembers. I remember, and God said, I will, I will, as the good father rewarded back to you, says the Lord. But God says, Go ahead, speak it out. Try it out, live it out, 
and you'll see the salvation of the Lord. Father, release healing, anointing right now into the household, amen, of Pam and Samson Hart. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I also want to pray for Mary Helms, amen. Everybody say Mary. 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 Mary is out there listening to us, amen. And uh, just I just sent forth a prophetic word to Mary. She had been here but had a dental surgery thing. But I just sent forth a word of healing to you, Mary. But I hear God say, this is a new time of grace and a new level of faith. And yeah. God said, there's a, a race that I want to put you in. And God said, in the natural, it looked like maybe you couldn't run it. Maybe you couldn't fulfill it. But God said, I, I'm going to be Jehovah Jireh. I'm going to be Jeho Yahweh. And God said, I'm going to show your daughter how to do it my way. And God said, the devil's going to have to pay for all the tricks that he's trying to pay on you, says the Lord. And I hear God say, this is a new time, Mary, of takeover. And God said, let your let the spirit of God arise in the midst of you. Amen. And God said, and your voice will be like a trumpet in Zion that will literally shake heaven and shake the earth, says the Lord. And Mary, there's a new level of, of um uh, the intercession, a new level of warfare that God said, I'm going to have you enter into and I'm going to have you break through with, says the Lord. Now, just I hear this so clearly. God said, this is not a time to stand alone. If there's anybody else out here that hears this word right now. This is not a time to stand alone. Amen. You need to be connected, yes. not just to say I go to church or I go here or I go there. You need to be connected so your roots can go so that I can cause a new flow of life into you so that you will be a strong old tree, so that you will be like the trees planted by the living waters that will be a provision in this end time vision of my kingdom on earth, says the Lord. And so Mary, God has so much more on the agenda. Don't pay attention to the little pains and the little this and the little of that. God said those things will try to pop up all the time. But I hear the Lord say, if you keep your eyes on me, I'll bring you through every storm. And through the process, I'll reform you so that you will come back and storm the gates of hell, says the Lord. Father, charge Mary Helm right now. And Lord, I just thank you for healing in her teeth and her gums. And, and Father, restore by the power of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God is good. Yeah. I just see a, uh, just real quick, a roll uh, of some uh, little sister. I ministered to you Friday night, sitting on the corner right back there. Well, back in the back. You have to be watching me now. Okay, I'm talking to my little sister right back there. Okay, you're over there. So okay. Oh, the, okay. Okay. I, I, I thought I saw some similarity. All right. So is this a family on that road? Yes, it's a couple of and her children and friends. They're all your children. One is a real. One is a friend. Which one's a friend? And well, you're in good company. <laughs> More for you than against you. That, that, that's good. Why don't you just stand together? All right, it's all right. Friend can stand as well. Amen. I just, you know, I, I just saw like a light on the roll of a, of, and I know it's the Holy Spirit, you know. And uh, God says to you as a family, Amen, that I'm going to light your fire. And Amen. the Lord said, You're going to aspire higher uh, in. The things of the spirit. Now you heard the word prophesied to somebody through this process. Amen. And God said that he was going to take everything that the devil meant for harm and he's going to work it for good. And God says that uh, he's going to balance your scale. The Lord said where there will be more of the spirit. And God said because there's more of the spirit, God said the natural will, will be subdued. And God said the natural will prosper because of the spiritual. And so God's going to help you to put things in right order in this chapter, this season of your life, says the Lord. And hear God say there's going to be more opportunity. There's going to be more favor. And God said, I want you to be for each other and not against each other, says the Lord. And just like God has put a unique anointing upon each one of you, and you can't compare yourself to each other. But God says that I'm releasing that, says the Lord. Now I'm going to assist here with the little hat on right here. Yeah, just raise your hand with me there so I can see you. Amen. Just uh, listen, 
There's going to be dreams and visions and things that God is going to put into your spirit. And God said, I'm going to activate that entrepreneur anointing and gifting within you. And God said, education will not be hindered. The devil will not be able to rob you, says the Lord. And God said, there's some things right now. It doesn't look like it's all coming together the way you had hoped it would. But God said, the end result is it's all going to come together, says the Lord. But God said, you're going to have to weather the storm. Be strong for the Lord your God is with you, says the Lord. And God's going to cause you to have some prophetic <laughs> insights. That merely means that we hear the voice of the Father and we do what we hear the Father say and what he does. Amen. And so, Father, just charge her in Jesus' name. The young brother that's right beside you there, I believe that's your brother. Amen. And just simply, I just heard the Lord say, you know and I know what you're not doing and what you are doing. And you know that I know that there's more that you need to do. It's like, you know, I heard this little saying one time. Remember when you was a wee little tot, you had to get out of a warm, warm cot. You had to go sit on a potty whether you wanted to or not. You, know, <laughs> you were forced to do things, you know, that you, you didn't necessarily want to do. And the Lord said, I love you too much to leave you the way that you are. And God said, I've called you to be an instrumental part of my kingdom. Mm -hmm. Listen, you should be doing what Pastor Tom's doing back in the sound booth. You should, you should be playing on drums with this stuff sitting up here. You should, be, you should be activated in the house of the Lord. I hear God say, I'm going to put a fresh dream and a vision and a purpose in you, says the Lord. And God said, you're not going to perish because of lack of vision. You're going to have a lot of vision, says the Lord. But God said, you're going to be required to do things whether you want to or not. Get you out of that one warm cot, says the Lord. And God said, I'm setting your feet on solid ground, says the Father. Amen? This sister right beside you there. Amen? And uh, is this younger sister, older sister? She's the, she, I can see she's a little shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But just uh, I hear the word favor over you. And God said, not only am I releasing favor to you, but I'm going to release favor to the family. And you, you're going to be a blessing to your household. You're going to bring honor to the family name, <clears throat> says the Lord. And God said, I want you to stand strong in your faith because I've given you the gift of faith. <laughs> and God said, I'm going to put you in the race this year. And God said, there's going to be new open doors of opportunity. And God said, don't compare yourself to mama, to sister, to brother, to others. And God said, you just align yourself with the heavenly father. And God said, I'm going to heal every disappointment and everything that the enemy meant to harm you with and to destroy you. I'm healing it. Today is a new day of salvation for you. And God said, I put a new vision, new dream on the inside of you, says the Lord. Amen. And for mama, this is mama now, right? Amen. Mama, you hear the word say, keep looking up. Keep looking up. You know, there's sometimes weights and pressures and things in life. You know, you're doing your best to look up, but it's like you get slapped on the back of the head to try to cause your head to be pointed down and to hang down. I hear the word say, I'm breaking the arm of the strong man to try to depress, try to oppress, yes. try to suppress yes. you. Hallelujah. And God said, the glory of the Lord is going to shine Thank upon you. Now listen, I, I understand we have prayer times here at this church. We have and God said, I want you to find every opportunity to be plugged into the prayer because there's a warfare anointing upon your life, says the Lord. And God said, you begin to defeat the armies of the enemy. And God said, I will fight for you and I'll fight for your family, says the Lord. And God said, we're going to work together and your future is not going to look like the past. The yes. past is finished. <coughs> you entered into the season of the favor of yeah. the Lord. And so, Father, I just charge his mother right now by the power of your word. Help her, Lord, to fight this good fight of faith. Help her to stay in the race, oh God. Help her to increase, oh Father, that Lord, that because her steps are ordered of you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's everybody reach over to friend. Amen. Yeah. This is friend. Right? <laughs> well, friend, what is your name, friend? I'm AJ. You got to talk a lot louder. AJ. AJ. Yeah. I know a lot of AJs. AJs. They're all dynamic. All dynamic men. Amen. Yeah. AJ, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. And I, I know you're, you're, uh, this is your first time being here? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, it's, it's kind of, it may feel strange. So I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand with me. 
Yeah. What that means is I surrender. <laughs> okay. And AJ, you've been a runner. And uh, you, you, you've really run hard. You've tried hard. It just seems at times, the harder you run, the more you get set back. Every time you get up, the more you get pushed back. And I hear the Lord say, as you reach out to me, AJ, God said, I'm releasing warring angels in heaven to begin to fight for you. And everything that the Thank enemy meant for a set back, I will use as a set up for a kingdom to come back, says the Lord. And God said, there's an anointing that I have upon your life, AJ. There's an encounter with God that you've not fully entered into yet, says the Lord. But God said, if you, son, will hunger and thirst after righteousness, I will fill you full and overflowing, says the Lord. And listen, there's a powerful anointing on the inside of you. God's going to anoint you in business, in the marketplace. Right now, you know, you work for other people, and, you know, you, you sacrifice, you try to do what they ask, and sometimes they're, you know, they're just not real agreeable people. You know, but, but God said, you've weathered the storms and you're working through it. But God said, I have a better day, a better way, a better pay for you, says the Lord. But God said, but you got to go through the cross. You got to go through the cross to get there. And see, a lot of people don't want to go through the cross. They want to say, look what I've done. Look what I fulfilled. Look how I succeeded. And God said, it's not about you. It's about the kingdom. And God said, if you get focused on the kingdom, I will cause the windows of heaven to be opened over you. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, says the Lord. And I will Amen. bless you in the land. So when Amen. you pray, God said, I want your whole heart, says the Lord. And God said, even the weaker areas of your life, I will make you strong, says the Lord. Paul the Apostle said, when I was weak, I was made strong in my weakness. <laughs> yes. No, so I really think because I was weak, I failed. No, 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 no. God will take your weakness and he'll make you strong to your weakness. And so, AJ, this is a new day for you. If you can hear the word of the Lord, respond to the word of the Lord, activate faith with the word of the Lord, God said you will see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Amen? Lord, we just charge this family right now. By the power of your grace, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't worry about it. It's only like 3 o'clock. So we're doing good. Amen. <laughs> My sister here on the second row, what's your name? Darla. 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 You, you want to stand with me, Darla? Yeah. Well, tell you what, Darla. Why don't you sit? And then I won't feel bad for standing, <laughs> standing with you. Okay. Thank you, Lord. We're drawn to press through here at 80 years old. I think we're trying to get a little bit done. Darla, do is that right, Darla? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Stretch your hands up to Darla. Darla, I'm hearing the word transformation as I'm praying. And uh, sometimes you can see transformation in life. You know, God's going to transform this. God's going to transform that. And uh, But I hear the word transformation in your life. Sometimes for transformation, there has to be demolition. You know, we're doing that out on 465 now, if you're going <laughs> on your highways in town. They're going to be beautiful highways one day. But right now, there's a lot of demolition. Sometimes you have to tear down old structure so that you can build new structure. And I hear the Lord say, I'm going to tear down old structure. Uh, Jack Frost, in his book on experiencing the Father's embrace, coined a term. He called it tearing down habit structure thinking. We've, we've learned a habit way of thinking. It's like you're going to come into a season, daughter, where God's going to just tear down the old habit structure thinking. Pain, shame, false blame, failure, all of these things. Even some old doctrine and positioning, everything it took to get you, where you're, there's some things God's going to do a demolition. He's going to tear down because I have an anointing <coughs> of transformation to release in you. And when you come into the transformation, you can't be have a roadblock of a bad exit or the traffic has to be flowing. And it's the same in the spirit realm. God said, if you'll let me do the demolition, God said, I have a master plan of transformation that I want to work in your life. There's a strong prophetic call of God upon your life, but it can only go so far until it's updated. And God said, I want to update you so that you'll begin to relate on a higher level, says the Lord. Now, listen, your voice is going to be heard in, in, throughout the nation. And God said, I will cause new inspiration that will put you in race. And God said, your confidence 
or won't be out of falsehood, but your confidence, the Lord said, will be out of your relationship with me, says the Lord. And God said, so I'm calling you to a higher place in the race in this season of your life. And you've been asking God, God, what's it going to take? What, what do I need to do? God, what's going to happen? You know, and God said, it's not about what somebody else is going to do, darling. It's about what you're going to do. And God said, let me do the demolition. And God said, then you shift from demolition. You know, if you go out there and go on the highways right now, they've <coughs> tore stuff out. I just saw it yesterday. They have big caterpillars out there. Now they're rearranging. And they're laying foundation for them to come in to put in the, the supernatural overpasses and all the things <coughs> that have to. But when it's done, the traffic's going to flow. That's when I hear the Lord speak to you. I'm preparing you to get you in a higher level of the race. But God said, let me update so you can relate, so you can activate, so you can stimulate. And God said, it'll be the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Now, I just see the Lord reaching way down deep, darling. And he said, I'm going to activate the heart of worship again. And you're going to have a greater, greater purpose of worship than you've ever had before. You have a beautiful voice. And God said, it's been hidden too long. It's like God is kicking down the door. He says, I'm going to bring you out of hiding and into a new place of abiding. And what God told Moses was, he said, now listen, don't you chide with me. Not this time, Moses. Don't chide with me. Because remember, Moses talked back to God a little bit. God, I can't do this. I can't do that, et cetera, et cetera. And God said, I don't want, I don't want chiding. I want you abiding. And God said, as you abide with me, I'm going to abide with you. And I'm going to fulfill the deepest passion, cry, and desires of your heart, says the Lord. Darling, God loves you so much. He has so much invested in you. And God said, I can see where I need to bring you to, but will you let me get you there? And God said, if you'll let me get you there, God said, God said, you'll reap the rewards of the end time harvest, says the Lord. Amen. Listen, God's not just going to fulfill you personally. But he's going to fulfill your family. And God said, a double portion of anointing will flow down upon you and will flow to your household, says the Lord. Okay? You have an ability to either destroy or to build. And God said, I want you to be a builder. God spoke to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. He said, Jeremiah, I want you to, verse 10, I want you to tear down, I want you to destroy, I want you to cast down, I want you to pull down the strongholds of hell. But I want you to be a wise builder of my kingdom. And God said, I'll use you as one of the end time builders. I see you authoring a book that will just, it'll be like a, what do you call it? Number one something? Number one bestseller. 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 Hallelujah. Bestseller. <clears throat> Look at somebody and say, why not? Why not? Well, why not, darling? Why, why not? <laughs> so it's like God's taking things off hold, darling. And God said, this is a new season, a new chapter, uh, says the Lord. God's healing every disappointment of the past. Thank you. And, and God said, I want you in full alignment, full agreement with my word, says the Lord. And my word will prove to be power in your life. Father, charge Darla right now right. by the power of your her family, her household, Lord, Thank all you. that pertains to her. God, let your blessings flood and overtake them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank this is a this is a new season of settling that God's gonna settle you in and settle you down. You know, we all want to grow, but unless we're willing to suffer the pains of growth, you can't grow. Yeah. I watch all my eleven grandkids, great grandkids. But I'm watching all the little kids, my grandkids, the great grandkids grow, and we've all children. I remember watching them grow. Then they jump in everywhere. You know, I got some little kids or jumping boxes. You know, anybody got any? They're everywhere. You know, so somebody that will you simmer down? We tell them to simmer down. But actually, what's happening is, is they're growing. That's why they're jumping all over, kicking everything, stretching out, doing all that. They're not just being obstinate or trying to be a nuisance to you, but they're trying to grow. They're stretching it out. Come on now. And God says, I'm going to give you freedom to grow, says the Lord. You're going, to, you're going to kick it out. You're going to stretch it out. Says Father, just charge, darling, now by the power of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It says back here, you have a, a is that a turbine? or Brittany. Yeah. 
Brittany? Yes. Amen. Uh, I'm going to have you stand with me, Brittany. It's Just... Denise, Denise's daughter. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You want to stand with me? Amen. Genre can't take that. Is everybody all right? <laughs> yeah. Do we need to pour water on you? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Brittany, is that right? Yeah. Wow. Uh, Brittany, I can just see the hand of God upon your life. And I can see his hand like positioned right, right on your heart. If you want to just lay your hand on your heart as a typology, that, that's where I can see the hand of the Father. And God said, daughter, I care about your heart. Now, I don't know you, don't know anything about you, but the enemy has done everything that he could, Darla. Darla? Um, no, Brittany. 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 <laughs> I got to get names right. Well, this is Darla. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. Brittany, the devil's done everything he could to try to disappoint, to try to rob, steal, kill, to try to destroy vision, purpose, to try to rob things out of your heart. You, you've come through the last six years of your life. It's been like him. You've done everything you could to try to press you down, push you down, put you down. But I hear the Lord say, you're where you're at right now, this very minute, by faith. You're hoping you're believing, God, will you hear me? And I hear the Lord say, 2024 will be a year of divine reversals. Well, and thank you. look at, you can look at Deborah in the Bible, you can look at Esther, beautiful life that destroyed the enemy, that activated the kingdom of light, of life in her. And I hear that God say, that's what I'm going to do in you. But the Lord says, daughter, I want your whole heart. There's been a Trust is a hard thing for you. I don't want to get into counsel and all of that, but trust is a hard thing for you. And the reason being is that trust has been broken. Trust has been hurt. And so it, it's harder to extend trust. But trust, true trust, is birthed out of forgiveness. And the Lord said, I'm, I'm going to teach you how to forgive so that you can trust. Forgiveness never makes a wrong right. The forgiveness releases you from a wrong. Yeah. But wrong will always be wrong, mm -hmm. even if you forgive it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says that, but if you will forgive it, God says, then I will vindicate you, says the Lord. And God said, the plan that the enemy tried to work through it, I will reverse upon his own head. Yeah. And God said, this will be a, a season of favor upon your life. I'm just, now, I believe this in my spirit. I believe from this day forward, then you're going to begin to escalate, you're going to begin to elevate, you're going to begin to accelerate to a higher level of the call and purpose of God upon your life. God said, I am your redeemer, and I'm working on your behalf, says the Lord. Uh, you, you have a powerful anointing for, wow, I've never heard so many people being able to sing and worship. We should have a choir. We should have, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the roof should be lifted off of this place with the gifts that God has brought into this. You're going to see it, Dr. Carroll. You're going to see it. But there's an anointing on you of worship, of dance, of, of arts. But there's also a strong teacher on the inside of you. And you will teach out of revelation of my word, says the Lord. And God said, I'll take everything that the enemy meant for your harm, and I will work it for your good, Romans 8, 28. And even, and God said, even what the devil meant to destroy you with, I'll work that for your good, says the Lord. And God said, you can't lose in this season. God said, put your hand in mine. And God said, we're going to throw the devil in the tailspin. And the Lord yes. says that uh, this is the time you're going to win, says the Lord. Now, God says that I want to give you the desires of your heart. God knows the desires and the cry of your heart. And God said you're going to have favor and you're going to reap the blessings of God upon your life, says the Lord. I uh, hear this clearly for you. It's a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. Don't blame mama. Don't blame daddy. Don't blame this. Don't blame that. Don't blame don't blame the things that tried to hinder your life. God says, daughter, your, your battle has never been with flesh and blood. It's been with principalities and powers of darkness and evil. God's going to help you to focus on that. Amen. So you can forgive them all and release it all. I'm just seeing the picture of, who's our brother in the Bible? Joseph in the Bible. Standing before all of his brethren at the peak of his kingship. 
in the midst of all of them and saying, oh, I, want, I forgive him. I want to forgive him. I want to release him. You know, I, I want him to be totally forgiven. I don't want to hold no accounts against him. Look how God, you know, and he finally told him, you know, what you meant for harm, God worked it all for good. Yeah. And that's what God is speaking to you. I'm working it all together for your good, just like I did Joseph. Says the Lord, Father, charge and bless her now. God, restore back to her what the enemy's trying to rob and steal from her. Activate her in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Does anybody shout hallelujah? This is over here with blonde hair, white, white and black blouse. You know, right there. Right there. Kathleen Wilson. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move real quick now. Amen. Because Jesus is coming soon. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is coming soon. I'm 80. And I've been ministering longer than most, most ministers would minister. Amen. Amen. What was the name again? Kathleen. Kathleen? Okay, Kathleen. Are you recording, Kathleen? No, I don't know. Okay, let's be sure we're recording for Kathleen. We got it. We got it. Kathleen simply said, this is a new season of the fire of the Holy Spirit. And God says that all the wet blankets that the enemy tried to put on you, I'm removing them in this season, says the Lord. More glory, more favor, more honor than you have ever experienced in your life. And God said, I want you to be a voice that will literally shake heaven and shake the earth. You say, God, how do I do that? By shouting unto the Lord. Bishop Hammond has spent almost 10 years preaching on the shout and the power of a shout. And God said, there's power in your shout. Shout at home, shout in the street, shout in the yard, shout in church. And God said, go ahead, shout it out. The Bible says that God, he came with a shout. He's going up with a shout. He's coming back with a shout. And God says, daughter, release a shout. And your shout is a weapon of war, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to defeat your enemy. And all that the enemy's robbed from you will come back to you with a sevenfold blessing, says the Lord. Now, God says, without a vision, people perish. And God said, I'm going to update, increase, and enhance the vision that I've given you, says the Lord. And God said, there's a teacher on the inside of you. And I just, I see you having outlines and just nugget after nugget after nugget of practical truth. And God said, you'll put things in a practical way that will bring healing in people, that will activate a purpose in them, says the Lord. Now, hear God say, what you do in the future, you can't do alone. And God said, you need strong covering. You need a place where your roots can go down deep, where you can extend trust, says the Lord, so that you can grow to the fullness of what I've called you. And then I hear the word multiplication. And I will multiply you a thousand times over, says the Lord. That means what you invest into people, people will multiply. And you'll be a reproducer that reproduces reproducers that keep reproducing, says the Lord. And uh, here, I just see like the arms of God wrapped around you and around your family. God. And God said the enemy meant to destroy but I, I mean life in that more abundantly, says the Lord. And so God said, this is your season. This is your chapter, 2024. Open the double doors, double blessing, double honor, and double favor, says the Lord. Father, charge and bless Catherine right now by the power of your word. Lord, I thank you for that word of healing on the inside of her. Oh, God, that will cause a new strength to, um, just like that well of living water beginning to erupt on the inside of her, that will bring new life within her. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God's good. Thank you. Amen. Who's a little sis here with uh, with uh, red and white? Uh, red and white. Red and black. Uh, right here? Yeah. This is Selena. This is Beulah's daughter. This is Beulah's daughter. Selena. Beulah have this covered, does she? Yes. Okay, John Rivet, she come out of the little side. I wanted to do. I have a volunteer that wants to come up and finish preaching my notes. No volunteers, okay. <laughs> so, no takers. <laughs> You're doing such a good job. Okay, what, what's her name? Selena. Selena. Yes. Okay, thank you. Stretch your hands over to Selena. John Rivet, qué tal la vida? Is everybody okay? We're just praying and ministering here. There's just a few more. So, amen. Selena, wow. So, you know, I get, even when I was sitting on the front row, I could feel a presence of God that is with you. There is so much going on on the inside of you. So much you want to convey, but you're not able to say what you want to say. You're not able to convey all that you're feeling and all that you're experiencing. And the Lord said, I understand that frustration. And God said, I have you in a place where it's you 
and me. And God said, as you cry out to me, Selena, God said, I'm going to bring a, a greater peace, a greater grace, and a greater faith on the inside of you. And God said, I want you to know that you're making impact just like you are, says the Lord. And sometimes you want to be more, or somebody may want you to be more, but God said, you are who I created you to be. And I'm happy with my creation, says the Lord. And Selena, God said, I want you to be happy with who you are. And I hear God say, the favor of the Lord is upon you. Your better day, your better way. And God said, the better pay of life is yet in front of you, says the Lord. And God said, I called you to walk the walk of faith, not of doubt and unbelief, but to speak those things that are not as though they are and believe it in your heart, Selena. And you'll see the favor and the salvation of the Lord up on your life. And God said, there's more blessing. Now, listen. Sometimes you just need to either record or how to dictate or write or however you would do it. But God said, I want to get what is on the inside of you. I want to begin to come out of you. It's like, you know, redigging the wells, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the, the, re, the wells of, of Jacob. You know, Isaac uncovered the wells and they redug the wells. Eventually all the wells were flowing again. And God said, I want to open up the well of life on the inside of you. And God said, I want you, daughter, Selena, to feel, God said, that you're an intricate part of my body. Listen, you're as important in the body of Christ as my little finger is on my hand. Oh, praise God. I injured my little finger one time. And guess <laughs> what? My entire body shut down <laughs> because of a little finger. <laughs> I, I mean, this is a good-sized body compared to my little finger. But this little finger controls this whole body. And God said, that's how important you are. To the body of Christ. Yeah. Amen. God says we fill your pain. And God yeah. said we fill your lack. But God said this is your time. Take up all the slack and take back. What God has purposed for you. Amen. Says the Lord. Amen. Father bless Thank her. You, Lord. By yes. the power of your grace. Yes. In Jesus, Jesus name. Jesus. My sister with a maroon. Uh, yeah. Kathy. Uh, Kathy. And I, I won't butcher your last name. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have you teach me how to say that after the service. But amen. You want to stand with me? You have a recorder? Amen. And so she's been a faithful follower on on our Facebook Facebook Live on Thursday nights. Amen. Good to see you here this morning. Yeah. Everybody reach up and say, glad to see you here. Glad to see you. Pray you come back again. Pray you come back again. <laughs> yes, again and again and again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Kath, Catherine, right? Amen. Uh, just, Father, we just charge Catherine by the power of your grace right now. And uh, Catherine, let me just tell you the picture that I can see. As I began to pray for you, it was like the ground you were standing on was beginning to shake. It was that, and um, I really believe that God's going to stir some things. He's going to shake some things. And it's almost like you've brought what you're doing to the level that you can get it to. Kind of like I don't know if the Lord was speaking to our sister Darla here about the demolition so that you can build things on a higher level. I kind of feel like God's going to have you reevaluate. Uh, God said where you're at, what you're doing, how you're doing it, technology. He's going to have you like reevaluate the whole plan and vision that God has given you. It's like you're going to, 2024 is going to be <coughs> the beginning of an updated vision and an updated dream. 2025, I'm going to cause you to begin to thrive. And finances are going to come in. It's going to cause you to be able to build the new plan. But you got to have a plan before you get there. I can't go to the bank and get a loan if I don't have a plan. I got to have a plan. I can't get a permit if I don't have a plan. And so God said, you must have a plan. And so God's going to work with you to get, get the plan together. He's going to cause you to stand. And God said, I'm empowering you by the grace of my hand, says the Lord. Now listen, what you do in the natural is beautiful. But there's a spiritual anointing upon your life. There's a river the God says that I'm going to tap into, says the Lord. And there's going to be a flow of miracles, a flow of deliverance and inner healing. And you're going to see lives not only saved, but transformed and changed, says the Lord. And there was an anointing that was imparted to you in this house 
many, many, many years ago. And God said, it's just been lying dormant. And God said, I'm bringing you out of dormancy and the full activity, says the Lord. And God said, I'm going to give you a bigger vision, not only of a community, but of a city, not only of a city and state, but of a nation, says the Lord, and of nations. And God said, this is your time to begin to break out of the old mold and come into the fullness of what I've called you to. Now, are you married? Yeah. Okay, just, um, and I don't know your husband, I don't, but let me just say, God's bringing new <coughs> alignment into your household. And God says that the two of you are going to flow together as one in the power of unity. And God says some strongholds are coming down. You're going to be blessed. He's going to be blessed. Your home is going to be blessed. And God said people are going to be blessed because I got you repositioned, says the Lord. And so God said this is the time of focus. I want you to focus on my word, focus on my anointing, focus on my power, and focus on your dream, says the Lord. The Bible says the devil comes to rob, to kill, to steal, to destroy. But I come to give you life and that more abundantly. There's an abundance of life that God has released upon you. I feel starting right now. I, I just, get ready. You're Thank going to feel Lord. shaking, shaking at home, Praise shaking God. in business, shaking in community. I'm, I'm just, you're going to say, God, what? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I said, no, <laughs> it's me shaking. It's, I'm shaking things, says the Lord. Hebrews 11, 24, 25. God said, I'll shake everything that can be shaken so only what is solid will remain, says the Lord. So God said, don't be moved by the shaking. But God said, Reap the benefits of the shaking, says the Lord. And God said, I'm preparing you for the restructure and for the you know, for the superstructure that I'm going to build with you, says the Lord. So, Father, we just charge, uh, Catherine, right now, by the power of your word in Jesus' name. I rebuke the devourer right now. That he cannot take what God means for positive and turn it into a negative. God, what, what you are speaking, you are able to do and fulfill and reward in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. I also want to just release a word of healing into your body. Now, Pastor, can you just go back and lay hands on her there? Jatada, Sheke Elder, Joko, Lemasha. Yeah. Amen. Just, uh, just lay hands on her just as I'm praying. Amen. Y'all be the hands extended. Father, I release the word of healing, the word of miracles, the word of breakthrough, the word of favor to her. But I release a healing in her body right now. Lord, adjusting the metabolism adjusting all the, the cell reproductivity and the life-giving cells in her body, strengthening of her blood, the marrow of her bone, oh, Father God. I take authority over headaches, backaches, and, and things that the enemy comes to, to try to cause pain in this body. And I rebuke it now in Jesus' name, and I command the healing bone of Gilead from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I see a couple, real quick, a couple of sisters on the back row back there. We just have a couple people in the building, and I, I, I can see kind of behind the pole and not behind the pole. And uh, there's, um, let me see if I can see just a little bit better. Oh, I still can't see them. Okay. All right. Oh, there they are. Oh, oh there they are. Okay. Are, are, is this family or? This is your mom. Well, how about this? Can almost be Mother's Day. Meeting. <laughs> it's your mom. Okay. Well, that's it. I just want to release a charge uh, into your heart and into your spirit. Okay. And uh, let me let me speak to mom first. Okay. And are you recording? You are now. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. You are now. Thank you, Father. Yeah, Father, release a fresh charge in in the mom's heart into her spirit. And I just hear the Lord saying to you that the better day is yet in front of you. And even though every day is a trial right now, it's a challenge. You know, from the time you wake up to the time you lay the lay the body down, <laughs> it's like it's a challenge. But I hear the Lord say, I'm getting ready to bring a shift in the challenges. And God said, hey, it's not going to be about physical or what you can do. or, or what, But God said, I'm bringing a shift to a dream and a vision in you that's going to energize you. And God said, to be able to do all that you need to do. You're an intercessor. You're a prayer warrior. But listen, God's going to begin to plug you in 
with other intercessors and prayer warriors. I just see new life of the Spirit coming to you. And God said, daughter, these latter years will far supersede the former years, says the Lord. And God said, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And God's going to begin to give you words of knowledge, words of wisdom. First Corinthians chapter 12. God said that will inspire. And God said that will ignite a fresh fire of the Holy Spirit within you, says the Lord. And God said, all of your history and family, God said, I want you to put it all in my hand. I just see weights and loads and burdens and things coming off of you and God says you can, you're going to feel more lifted up in this season you're, you're going to feel like a 30 year old lady and God says Woo! that just uh, let, let me go let me go let me go God and God said you're going to be a runner for me says the Lord Father just charge and bless her in Jesus name we pray listen to this word over and over and over again amen and for the daughter I just hear the Lord say I'm turning you around says the Lord and God said, I'm going to cause you to be able to see what you, the things that you missed seeing, says the Lord. It just, it's like you've been in the fast lane for the last 35 years of your life. And God said, I'm going to move you over onto the slow lane a little bit. And like in the book of Ecclesiastes, you're going to read it. Go home and read that book in the Bible. And God said, you're going to smell the roses of some things for the first time in your life, says the Lord. And God said, this is going to be a time of reward. You served others. Others will serve you, and the blessing and the favor of the Lord will come back to you, and I'll cause my blessings to overflow and to take you, says the Lord. Now listen, you're not only an intercessor prayer, but you're a prayer warrior, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to wage warfare prophetically. You're going to hear the voice of the Lord. You're going to know how to put your foot on the neck of the enemy. Uh, Joshua chapter 10, when he said, put your feet on the necks of the enemies. And God said, some strongholds are coming down over your family, your household, and your sphere of influence, says the Lord. And God said, you're coming into a season of increase. It's going to give you greater peace and a greater release of faith in your life, says the Lord. So, Father, I just charge this daughter of Zion right now. Oh, God, ignite a fire on the inside of her that calls her to aspire to a higher level in you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody said amen. We want to pray for Pastor David. Amen. We'll ask Pastor David yeah. he'll come up and just pray for him. Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Brother Elder David here is a single man. Is there any lady here that Pretty would like woman. to be a taker? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> 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 Amen. But as I lay hands on David, we do we do honor. Amen. We heal pain. You know, look, uh, loss of a friend and, and your brother. Amen. Harold, Elder Harold, and they work together with us as a team. Amen. But this is the new, it's so interesting. That God knew what he was going to do with Harold. God knew. Amen. But he also knew that he wasn't going to be alone. Amen. Amen. And it's just so beautiful. How God is putting things together in this season of your life. Yes. If I was to go back three, four years ago, it didn't all together look that way. Yeah. Amen. And so there was times of confusion, times of, you know, just God, how am I gonna how am I gonna how am I gonna maneuver here? You know, but God had a plan. Amen. And just I want to compliment you for the work you've done, your steadfastness, your consistency, yes. your faithfulness. Yes. And if you sacrifice that you've been in this church here over all these years. Amen. amen. And that you're deserving of a beautiful bride. Amen. And she's deserving of a quality, quality man. Amen. amen. So it's just so good to see what God is doing. Amen. But Father, I release a fresh charge. Lord, yes. and, and, as an apostle, <clears throat> as a spiritual father, Lord, I just release a charge into his spirit right now. And I hear the Lord say, son, this is a new day of life, and you're going to walk in the land of the living, says the Lord. And God said, it's going to be uh, a new season of provision. And God said, I'm going to catch you up with the heaven's vision. Amen. Like Paul the Apostle said, I was caught up with the Lord. Whether I was present here or in heaven, I'm not sure. All I know, I was caught up in the presence of God. And the Lord said, I'm going to catch you up on the Lord's day in the spirit, says the Lord. And God said, there are new things that I'm going to speak into your spirit. And God said, there's some fresh revelation, an apostolic revelation that I'm going to a cause to abound on the inside of you, says the Lord. And God says, the, the time will come. I'll have you and your bride. We'll stand together, says the Lord. Sometimes you'll teach together and you'll do things together. 
And God said, I don't want this relationship to be one running out ahead of the other or just standing behind. But God said, I want you to come in line together, says the Lord. And God said, we're one to chase a thousand. The two of you will be able to chase tens of thousands, says the Lord. And God said, you come into a whole new season of purpose, says the Lord, and of vision. And just, I'm, I'm just seeing like a major law. It's like, I see the key in, in the Father's hand. And God said, I'm putting it in your hand. Mm. And God said, you are going to unlock revelation. Mm. You're going to unlock my word in this Thank season, you, says the Lord. And God said, it's going to bring healing uh, in your sphere of influence in my church. And uh, I'm hearing the word, a unique edge. You know, everybody Ooh. has an edge of something. Amen. And but God's going to give you a unique edge for glory point. And a glory point will always be the place where you will abide, where you will minister, where you will grow, where you will bring others in, where you will train up, where you will raise up, where you will activate. You're going to be like one of those, you know, 24 elders that we speak about in the book of Revelation. They didn't run here, run there. No, they stayed right there at the throne. And God said, you're going to stay right here at the throne. And God said, your, your eyes are going to see the favor and the manifest power and presence of God. Now, just see rain, but it's not literal rain. It's, it's like money just falling out of the heavens. You know, just God said, I'm going to rain down of my glory. I'm going to rain down of my blessing upon you. And God wants to challenge you. A son can never think small. Never think small. And God said, I want you to dream, and I want you to dream big. I just feel like God's putting a princess in your life that will help you to break out of some old molds of thinking. And for the first time in your life, you're going to dream big, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to experience big blessing, big refreshing, and God said, a greater manifestation of my anointing upon your life, says the Lord. So God said, it's a new day of favor, new day of grace, a higher place. And God said, repositioning in your race, says the Lord. Father, just charge this man of God by the yes, power Lord, right of your right now. Right in Jesus' name we pray. In yes. Jesus' Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, Lord. God's good. Hallelujah. Let's pray for pastors. Okay, Pastor Carol Tom. You know, well, pastors are coming up. This is a young man right here. This is this little guy. Hey, He's had my attention all. Oh. <laughs> this, this is her son. Oh, this he belongs to you? Yes. Oh, is that right? Yes. So what's his name? Caden. Caden. Oh, Caden. Caden. Yes. Caden. Is that right? Yes. Wow. Okay. Can I pray for you, Caden? Yeah. You okay with that? You want to come on up? Okay. Come on up, Kate. Just, yeah. Amen. Somebody's recording for Kate. We got it. Yeah. Or you got yeah. it. Mama got it. Or Can somebody. It? It's on Facebook. So it's, it's on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. It's a, it's a, if you get your phone on, you got it really quick. Really I've, got fast. This, I've got this one running. Okay. Shara, yeah. uh, just stand right here, Kate, so I can just pray for you. And I'm going to touch you, okay? Don't make me fall off step now. Yes, you <laughs> Thank you, Father. Lord, I just uh, release a fresh charge. Uh, of anointing over Caden right now and the blessing of the Lord. And I, as I pray for you, uh, you know, uh, your name is Caden, but I heard Caleb. And that Caleb spoke these words in his latter years. And he said, God, I follow you faithfully all the days of my life. And because of his faithfulness of following God, it gave him the authority to say, now give me my mountain. Yeah. That's what I hear the Lord say to you, Caden. Uh, Caden, Caden, is that <laughs> how it, is that follow the Lord faithfully all the days of your life. Yeah. Read the Bible, pray, learn the fruit of the Spirit, memorize them, and let them be attributes of your life. And the Lord said, "I'll open the doors for education, for preparation, for acceleration, and you'll always be a man at the top," says the Lord. But one day, you'll be able to stand like Caleb of old. Remember that. And you'll be able to say, give me my mountain. And the Bible says that God gave him all of Hebron. And the Lord said he got the mountain area for his, for his children, his children's children, and generations to come. And the Lord said, the blessing of the Lord will flood you and overtake you, says the Lord. So, Father, we just charge and bless Caden now by the yes. power of your grace, the power of your word. Lord, I activate creativity in this young yes. man. Yes. Oh, Lord, to stand strong as a Caleb in the house of the Lord. Thank in Jesus' Lord. name.
Amen. 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 Prophets, prophetic, apostolic. Amen. Amen. And I, I want to activate that, uh, Pastor Carol. I know we haven't talked about it, but I, I want to ap- activate uh, an apostolic side of your ministry. Uh, you're, you're a strong shepherd. You're a strong pastor. And, uh, and, and you're a strong prophetic voice. But I really believe that the counterweight of it all is the apostolic. Uh, C. Peter Wagner called it hyphenated anointing. In other words, you don't carry just one mantle. You carry two mantles. You see? And Bishop Hammond, in his book on prophets and the prophetic movement, uh, said the same thing you know, about, about the anointing of being hyphenated. Okay? And that you have um, the second of the two is what is the strongest. So what I'm sensing is, is a pastoral apostle. In other words, strong pastor, but stronger apostolic. And I just believe the Lord wants to charge the two of you together with an apostolic mantle, apostolic anointing, to be wise master builders. And Amen. God said, this has been your learning process, but the greater building is yet to come. And God said, the more planting is yet to come. And God's going to begin to put a fresh burden and dream in the hearts of the two of you. God said to build outside of your limitation. It's going to be your year where God's going to challenge limitations. And God said, I'm going to break out in the marketplace, in the church, the building of my kingdom, says the Lord. And God said, you're coming into a a season, the Lord says, where I'm going to plant those with you. God said, they will be strong armor bearers. And the Lord said, they're going to hold your arms up. and hold. They're not going to uh, be crossways with the vision, but they're going to be ones that will help to build a vision, says the Lord. I'm bringing to that strong army. It was David, I believe, the Lord said that. Now, David, I'm going to bring you those that are prepared. Those are already ready. You don't have to train everybody that comes. They're going to come trained. And people that have been not faithful in being trained are going to get jealous. Just like that's why God spoke that in the Bible. You know, I'm going to bring those that are already trained and ready. You know what I mean? But those that will give themselves, amen, I'm going to escalate them and I'm going to use them. God just saying, you're coming into a time of expansion, a time of increase. I'm going to bring you leader after leader after leader. You have to train leaders different than you do babies. If I bring a baby in off the street, compared to bringing somebody that's had 40 years of trials and tribulations and experience and rejections, and, and yet they're faithfully following God, I've got two different types of people to work with. And God says, I'm gracing you to be able to work with the mature, the immature, the young, the old, says the Lord. And God said, your eyes are going to get to see the favor of God. And the Lord said, what has been painful building is now going to be joyful acceleration. I just say, listen, worshipers are coming, praisers are coming. Somebody's going to come to this house that plays the saxophone. I'm decreeing oh, that. that. I'm <laughs> that. Amen. That there's going to be new sounds of praise and worship yes. and warfare that has come up in the house. It's literally going to shake the heavens mm. over Indianapolis. Woo. And God said, you're going to be a, a, a key point for bringing unity and unifying mm. other churches, even in the city, says praise the God. Lord. And God says, son, you're coming into a greater kingdom impact in marketplace, you're going to have new favor, says the Lord. I'm going to continue to give you dreams and inspiration, and I'm going to give you provision, says the Lord. But God said, I want you to get along with me, Apostle Pastor Tom. I want you to get along with me. And the Lord said, I want to balance out that scale. And God said, all that is offered to you to do, come back to the scale. Does it mean that I sacrifice the spiritual scale to do the natural? And God said, you always keep the spiritual being the stronger weight, that, that tipping point. Always let the spiritual be the tipping point. If it's the tipping point, the other will excel to higher levels, says the Lord. And so God says, my hand is upon your children and upon your household. And uh, you know they're learning some things right now. And they're going through some things. But God said, I promised you in their youth and in the womb that I would not leave them or forsake them. And God said, I will not leave them or forsake them, says the Lord. God said, even though the, the, the rivers rise and the winds blow and, and the mountains try to crush, 
God said, yet I will save them, says the Lord. This is a covenant. This is a promise Amen. that you have with Father God. Amen. And the Lord said, I want the two of you to stand firm in that promise, says the Lord. Now put your arms around each other. And just, <laughs> Amen. This, now, everybody in the church, just stretch your hand up here. <coughs> because what's happening right now is that I, I, I'm, I'm releasing a unity in the two of them. Oh, they're married. They're happily married. They're good to each other. You know, they have their trials and just like everybody else does. But that, but they work through everything. Have now for what? Thirty-seven oh. years? Forty-seven? Thirty-seven? Uh, married? Yeah. Thirty-four years? Uh, 34, almost thirty-five. Almost thirty-five years. Mm -hmm. You know that, 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 that you work through the storms. But I hear the Lord say you're coming into a greater place in your marriage, in your relationship, in your communication, in your vision, and in your dream. You. And God said, and in your anointing of working together, says the Lord. And God said, as anointing is released upon the two of you, I just see it flowing down to the whole house, to every member Amen. of this God. Those present Thank and those you, that are yet Thank to you, come, Lord. says yes. the Lord. And Thank this will be you, a time Lord. of strengthening, a time <laughs> of life, a time of impartation, and a new season of activation, says the Lord. So, Father, we just thank you. I speak healing in, in yeah. Pastor Carol's body right now, yeah. and I call all the things. that you know, One thing has come after another, after another, after another. We cut it off now in right. Jesus' name. Yeah. Lord, we'll finish this assignment. We'll yeah. cough this out. We'll get rid of that. We'll yeah. open our eye, but we ain't going back there again. No. God, we're coming out <laughs> to come all the way in. Ooh, listen, your miracle healing has been a process, but it's been a process for the church. And God said, I've allowed you. The Bible says that Jesus, our Heavenly Father, was tested, tried in every manner as we are. And God said, I've allowed you to feel the pain of, of my church. I've allowed you to feel the sufferings. I've allowed you to feel. And God said, I don't know what you see. It just is an attack against you. And God said, you're, you're carrying a burden. But here now, God said, now I'm lifting that burden. Mm. Lay it down to the cross, says Hallelujah. the Lord. And, God, you, Lord. and it's just going to be a continual flow in the congregation you, of miracles, of healing. People walk through the door, Hallelujah. walk out of the door. And God said, they're going to experience the manifestation mm. you, of the Jesus. power of God. So, Father, I just charge pastors, apostles right now. I, I ignite that anointing mm. upon their life. God, to apostolically begin to dream of building yes. and the building process, God. Oh, Father, that your church will excel and all glory will be given to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. Is there anybody in the house that we have not prayed for? No, we I watched. Praise on. the Lord. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it back to pastors. Amen. Listen back over this word, and I'm going to make a copy of that. And if anybody would like to see a copy in written form, Pastor Craig <coughs> will have that. So, Amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. Can you give him a hand? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Are y'all blessed? Yes. What I'd like to do now is to receive a special offering for our spiritual father, Apostle Leon. Now, somebody said, well, you already received the tithes and the offerings. Well, the tithes is what God says. You just got to give me the top 10% and trust me, and I'll take care of you that's with so your non your 90, right? Yeah. That's, just, that's just our regular practice, what we have to do. What happened today, would you not say it was above and beyond? Yeah. Let me ask you this. How many places can you go in Indianapolis right now and receive personal ministry? And a word into your life for 2024 like you just received. Can, how many places? Let's say there's maybe a couple. This is not usual ministry. This is not what everybody does in the house of the Lord on Sunday. Amen. So. Apostle Leon. Apostle means a sent one. God sent him to us today. This weekend. To be on our board, to bring wisdom and guidance for this ministry. He blessed many of you on Friday night already. So if some of you say, well, so-and-so didn't get blessed. No, there was many ministered already on Friday night. Yeah. Okay. The rest of you, everybody has been personally ministered to. Mm. And the message that he had on the waves of glory, ministering to our house, but to each one of you as well. 
So what I would like to challenge you mm. to do right now is to bless Apostle Leon mm. personally mm. as you were blessed Amen. personally today. Amen. He just blessed each one of you richly, okay, well. by speaking into your life. And don't you love the prophetic word? Because it, it busts up thoughts you had of your life, and it takes you up higher to think higher of what God has, God's higher thoughts. Wow. Now, those are in your spirit, okay? But we needed him to come and speak those to us, right, to inspire us, to stir us, to challenge us. So <clears throat> what I'd like to do is for you to go to Holy Spirit and ask him, how can I generously bless the man of God, the apostle, the sent one that came to speak into our lives? And also, many of you, it wasn't just you alone. It was your family that he spoke into. He spoke into my family. Beverly and all her family and all of you Smiths and Andersons and <laughs> that are here in the house. So Good I want Lord. you to take a moment wow. and I want to bless. We want to bless him. But let me tell you, you were blessed with the word he gave you and the message. And I'm asking you to bless him. But then God's going to bless you for blessing him. Yeah, that's interesting. OK, it's going to come back to you. I and what the that. Lord said to me, he was showing me during, during when he was speaking, go grab yeah. the silver plates. Silver means redemption. And what God was saying was, as you give today to the apostle, not only are you sowing into his life, mm. but Good. what I was hearing was God was said, said, I'm redeeming all. So I'm going to release a blessing of redemption Good. of Good. all Good. that's Good. been lost, wow. redemption of all, over all of your offerings. And I'm mm. going to ask him to lay hands on it. Mm. I feel like so we can do this expeditiously. I'm going to put one on either side of the Alter, if you're on this side, come to this side. If you're on that side, come here, come down, and then back through the center and back wow. to your seat. Okay, take your time to hear what Holy Spirit is saying. Mm. Then if you can grab an envelope, if for some reason you don't have one, we'll try to scare one up for you. If wow. Hopefully you're not running out. Mm. And then we're going to bless this blessing of redemption, and I'm going to have the Apostle Leon lay hands on it too. Also, you can give with Givelify. <clears throat> if y'all have Givelify app on your phone, you can give that way. All right. And when he's laying hands on it, just hold your phones up, and we're praying for that anointing to hit everything wow. that you have. Wow. Amen. Wow, wow. Okay. Wow. So as you're ready, just come on up. <laughs> we'll take those, bring those together, and bless them. And I want to thank you for your time wow. and your patience. I was sensing thank some you of Lord. you were getting thirsty, so I had to meet Jennifer bring out water for y'all. If you didn't get one, I've got it right over here on the chair. If anybody's thirsty, okay. just grab the water. I'm making my way there. Okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Your, uh, so good seeing you. You as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> If you mark on your envelope, speaker, of course, if you already have, we'll, we'll set these aside. But put speaker offering, that would be helpful. And then this is going to be a special offering that we're going to, to give to him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Howdy. Do you want me to keep this one? Let's do it. Through the whole yeah. to the end. Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. And if you're online with us, please also send a, an offering here for, for the man of God, his minister, to everybody online as well today. 
we thank you all for being with us. We're just going to continue here. Um, is, it, is there anybody that still needs more time? Okay, I know I need to get mine in, actually. We have a um, negative. <clears throat> we're all clear that we can bless these? Okay. David, would you please pick them up and let's bring them over to him? I don't want to. <clears throat> bless you. God bless you. Amen. Just bless the seed, David. Elmer. Yeah. Yeah. And then bring them over here and we'll lay hands on them. Thank you. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we bless and sanctify these special speaker offerings for the Apostle, for the spiritual Father of God that speaks into our region and into the United States and beyond. Lord God, we ask you to bless these back and that they will multiply even in his hands. Yes, Lord. And we pray, Lord God, for redemption yes. to come back upon every giver that is given the sacrificial personal offering. Lord God, yes. I ask you to redeem everything that's been lost or taken. Redeem the time, redeem oh God, yes. in Jesus' name. I'll redeem all this. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Anything Amen. else? Okay. Praise God. We Thank just seal these up in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Now, I know that you've all been here, but every week we celebrate the Lord's Supper and we take communion together. And it's one of the most special parts of our service. So we don't want to sacrifice that. Amen. Pastor David does a beautiful job. Come on up. And so we're going to ask him to, wow. to lead us in that. And then thank after you. that, have a couple little announcements, and then we're going to release you. So thank you so much for your patience, and I hope you all have been richly blessed in coming mm. today. And we invite you all to come back, especially if you don't have a church home. Amen. Amen. Redeemer, Mm. At this time, we'll celebrate the Eucharist, also called the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion, as soon as everyone is ready. This is sacrament was instituted by our Lord Himself. Yes. Before He left us, He said, "Do this as often as you ought." Yes. <coughs> Hallelujah. This sacrament brings with it deliverance and healing if taken you. rightly with the right Thank attitude. You. Thank you. Before we come take a Lord's Supper, forgive everyone who needs to be forgiven. Yes. Hallelujah. So you can come before the throne with a clear conscience. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise be after me. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you for bearing my symptoms and sicknesses at the cross. So that I may have your health and wholeness. I declare that by your stripes, by the beatings you bore, by the lashes that fell on your back, I am completely healed. I believe and I receive your resurrection life in my body today. Please thank you. Continue. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
for your blood that has washed me whiter than snow. Your blood has brought me forgiveness and made me righteous forever. And as I drink, I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which includes preservation, healing, wholeness, and all your blessings. Please partake. As I eat the body of the anointed one and drink the blood of the anointed one, I dwell in the anointed and the anointed dwells in me. Now let the full healing effect of Christ's sacrifice be manifested in me right here, right, here. Right, now. right now. Amen. 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 We thank you, Lord, for your absolute power and potency of your living word. Thank you, Lord. The body and blood of Jesus defeats the enemy and brings abundant life. So let it be. So let it be. Amen. 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 Thank you. And now we'll have announcements. Announcements. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> announcements. Hearing, hearing, hearing. Hearing, hearing. February the 3rd will be the first healing service for this new year Amen. from 12 to 2. So this is our announcement. So all of you can come out on February 3rd for the healing service. Here at Glory Point, and all roads lead to Glory Point. Amen. Be blessed. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> That's the time. Do you want me to do it? Okay. <laughs> Somebody's asleep at the post. You're almost there. <laughs> You're almost there. You're almost there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Y'all don't want to leave with you without your weekly blessings. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Hey. Well, I take authority over every ungodly spirit signed every hour of every day this week. I cover every hour of every day this week in the blood of Jesus yes. over each one of you, Amen. your family, and your household. Yes. Amen. I release the priestly blessings, number 6, 24, 26. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you peace. Wow. I release the plans and purposes of God in every hour of every day of this week, and may divine doors of your destiny be opened wide before you with fruitfulness waiting at the threshold. I release angels of the Lord to excel in strength and assignment to tend and watch over you. Right now. Wow. And may additional <laughs> angels of the Lord be released to every company you work for or school you attend. Yep. I pray for wisdom and knowledge of God's plans and purpose in the midst of every challenge or trial that you face. And I seal up God's plans and purpose and divine destiny over yes. each one of you and all your family members in the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Have a great week. Hallelujah. Take the word that, a pop, that a, um, Apostle Ann just gave you yes. deep into your heart to yes. think and meditate on it. And start tomorrow morning with new life. Amen. 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 Remind them that it's recorded on Facebook. Oh, and if, if, you, if you're fun, you have copy door on your phone, but if you want to, anytime just go to Facebook. And you can just take the thing and dial in, you know, push it, and see where you are being prayed to. If you want to see a word, or of course, listen to the word again. Wait. Yeah. And also the Friday Facebook service. Facebook page if you is missed it. Uh, Carol Abbott yeah. and Boy Point. They, they point to each other. Okay. And you also can Google YouTube Carol Abbott, and it'll come up there as well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great week. Wow. See you in February. Oh, Already. Bye. <laughs>